What is good, family? Welcome back for another one. This is your girl. I am Courtney Michelle, and I have a lot to say tonight. So I want to welcome you guys that are tuning in, that's popping up. What is going on? What is going on, family? Um, so I'm going to get right in it. You know how I do. Usually with my shows, I try to be very, very um, clear. Um, I try to, of course, do my research, which um, I got a little stuff to show tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and get into it. So again, thank you guys. Hey, Sayla, you... Oh, darling, I see you. Hey, Eugene, what's going on, Gunmetal? Um, all right, so let me start off by saying this. Um, and I want to be very, very clear on my stance. I am pro-life. I'm pro-life. Um, the three reasons why I am pro-life is, one, because of religion. If you don't know, I am a Christian. Um, second, because a biology. How that gets missed in a lot of our conversations, the mere biology of it all, it's astounding. It's astonishing. But, um, and the other reason is because I understand the procedure of what it is to terminate a pregnancy. I'm not going to get into all three, particularly to the biology of it and also the procedure. Um, and then there are some clips that I want to show you guys as well, too. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, I think with these conversations that we had, and of course, everyone is talking about the Roe v. Wade and it being overturned and is going back to the states. I think it's phenomenal. I'm excited about it. Um, the reasons why I'm excited about it, I'm going to get into also tonight. But um, I think people don't correlate the um, Roe v. Wade and it being overturned and also the idea of abortion. So let's bring up some stuff. I'm going to go ahead and start doing that now because I got a lot to say and I don't want to take up everybody time nor mine. It's a Sunday. You know, I cooked a little Sunday dinner, so I'm going to get to that tonight. <laughs> let me put up some stuff. All right. And let me go back, actually. So uh, what I'm going to talk about first is going to be this, and this is all going to come together, is before Planned Parenthood. I think a lot of people don't know that before Planned Parenthood, abortions was going on. And you can see the practice of induced abortions. This was going on in ancient times. So back in the day, 1500s to 1600s, this act what's going on. So this is nothing new. It's nothing new to the states. Um, it officially, abortion laws didn't appear on the books in the United States until 1821. So I think that's very important to understand that what we're fighting about um, and it being legal and not being legal, this act was taken, has been done for ages in America, overseas, in the UK. So it's definitely nothing new. Um, Quicken did not become illegal until the 1860s. Have you guys ever heard of Quicken? I bet you haven't. I'm seeing in the chat. No. So let's explain what that is. Quicken is referred to when the fetus begins to move inside the womb, which was anywhere between 15 to 20 weeks into pregnancy. This was when an infant uh, took on a soul as it was believed. So in the 1800s, there were laws because they had an idea that the baby was a baby when the mother could feel it inside of her belly. And in the 1900s, the turn of the century, abortion was normally a felony in every state. Some states included uh, provisions allowing for abortions in limited circumstances, generally to protect the woman's life, or to terminate pregnancies arising from rape or incest. So let's talk about that. In the 1900s is when provisioning started happening with abortions. This is before Planned Parenthood, obviously before Roe v. Wade. So things were happening. And then people started thinking, hey, let's start doing provisions because now we're understanding that maybe it is a baby when the mother can feel it. 
So on October 16, 1916, the first family planning and birth control clinic opened at 46 Amboy Street in Brownsville uh, neighborhood in Brooklyn. This was the first of its kind in the States. So let's wrap that all up, okay? Because I'm telling the story. Abortions was happening. Been happening for ages. Then the government kind of started getting into it and wanted to do provisions over it because they started figuring out that, hey, that baby, it is a baby once the mother starts feeling it. So once the mother started feeling, they started to say, hey, well, between 15 and 20 weeks, we want to try to protect what's inside the mother's belly. So stuff became illegal and there was provisions. And then here we go. And starting in 1916 in Brownsville, if you already know, that's in Harlem, I believe. So in the black neighborhood um, is where we started popping up a lot of stuff for parenting. So if you didn't want to, these provisions was getting you upset. So we had the idea or someone had the idea to in a black neighborhood in 1916, let's start putting different things in these areas to prevent pregnancies. That's Brooklyn. Yeah, Harlem. Well, yeah, I'm in Nashville, so go figure. So I wonder who in 1916, who put the first place that we wanted to quote unquote planned pregnancies I wonder who started that. Hmm. Margaret Singer. She's believed in you. She believes in eugenics, which is based off the theory of Darwinism. Um, so this is eugenics was a process of speeding up evolution to protect mankind. This meant weeding out inferior people and races from society and given prominence to the fit people of society. So she started thinking about, well, I believe that, and this is Margaret Singer, that we have a lot of unfit, desirable, undesirable people in the States. So let's start creating things and provisioning where since abortions are being more regulated, let's put things in black areas starting in Harlem to try to regulate this. Oh, Margaret Sanger, she's a sweetheart. So let's look at some quotes from Margaret Sanger. I'm gonna go through some of these. And again, she started this in 1916. So this is a quote back from 1918. All of our problems are a result of overbreeding among the working class. Knowledge of birth control is essentially moral. It's general through prudence. Uh, practice must lead to a higher individually and ultimately to a cleaner race. I wonder who she's talking about. Who is the cleaner race? Let's go. These two words, birth control, sum up our whole philosophy. It means the release and cultivation of the better elements in our society and the gradual suppression, elimination, and eventual extinction of defective stocks. These human weeds, which threaten the blooming of the finest flowers of American civilization. Again, this was back in 1916, quotes from 1918, and here we are in 1923. Margaret Singer. Apply, apply a stern and rigid policy of sterilization and the segregation to the grade of population who's, excuse me, well, who's tainted and whose in, uh, inheritance is such that objectable traits may be transmitted offspring. That was in 1932. Another quote that we have, no woman shall have the legal right to bear a child. No man should have the right to become a father without a permit for parenthood. Margaret Singer. Birth control itself, often denounced as a violation of natural law, is nothing more, nothing less 
than the facilitation of progress of weeding out the unfit, of preventing the birth of defectives or for those who become defective. If we are to make racial progress, this development of womanhood must precede motherhood in every individual woman. What does this mean, people? Margaret Sanger, specifically in her words alone, has been telling the world that she wants to prevent the defectives from, from breathing, the unfit. Who is the unfit? Who are the defectives? Why did she put her first building in a 1916 in Harlem? Margaret Singer proclaimed in a letter, I consider that the world and almost our civilization for the next 25 years is going to depend upon a simple, cheap, safe, contraceptive to be used in poverty stricken slums, jungles, and among the most ignorant people. Even this would not be sufficient. <laughs> so contraceptives ain't even sufficient for her. Okay. I believe now, immediately, there should be national sterilization for certain um, was it digenic types of our population who are being encouraged to breed and would die out where the government not feeding them. Contraceptive research needs tremendous financial support. So Margaret Sanger was a eugenics and she believed in weeding out the unfit, the degenerates, and she specifically wanted it in the slums where the people were breeding. Eugenics, of course, what I stated earlier, and I'm gonna reiterate it, is trying to get rid of people they don't seem valuable and inferior. And we all know historically in America who those people were. People that look like you and me. Margaret Singer also created the Negro Project. Now, this is back in 1939. And all this stuff is available. I don't know why some of us don't research a little bit more about who Margaret Singer is, because she's definitely important on this reversal um, of Roe v. Wade. But alongside with Black leaders, of course, we got our good man, W.E.B. Du Bois. Y'all know that he believed in the talented 10th, so I'm not really surprised. Um, but this was to bring access to birth control to Black communities. Sanger noted that their primary responsibility would be to tour the South, dispelling uh, misconcepts about birth control and promoting the use of future clinical resources. Being aware that the general disgust that existed between Black patients and white doctors, Sanger believed that their involvement and outreach would be instrumental in ensuring continued use of clinical resources. According to Sanger, then only after a successful educational campaign would Black operated birth control, birth control clinics be established and open for use. So she decided to use our Black leaders in 1939 to convince Black people that we should have these in our communities and how helpful it would be to us. Because she knew that Black people was very distrust, they did not, didn't trust the government, clear reasons why back then, didn't trust white doctors, clear reasons on why. So she had the bright idea to enlist other Black people to help with our demise. Smart lady she was. Huh. However, there was a note that she wrote to one of the doctors back um, in that time as well. Sanger wrote a letter to Dr. C.J. Gamble about the Black community. She predicted that the most successful educational approach to the Negro is through a religious appeal. 
We do not want the word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. And the minister is the man who can straighten out that idea if it ever occurs to any of their rebellious members. She wrote a note and the note is legit. You can pull it up to a doctor. She doesn't want the world to know and the word to get out that she wants to exterminate black people. And the tool to use that would be through the black church. Man, that sounds eerily familiar from back then. You remember um, during slavery in the States and that good old Nat Turner was a, a minister and slave owners used him use the black church to keep us enslaved. So now Margaret Sanders using the church to, to, to kill us. Good thing for Nat though, he, he started reading and understood what was going on. That's why he rebelled. And I'm trying to figure out when are we gonna start rebelling because this is a hall in plain sight. Margaret Sanger, other stuff about her. Of course you see her talking and having rallies for the KKK. She, this Margaret Sanger. She incorporated her businesses that she had American Birth Control League and the Birth Control Clinical Research Bureau, both organizations she found and those two merged to become Planned Parenthood in 1942. Planned Parenthood is Margaret Sanger's brainchild and it is her baby. Interesting note, I just put this just random because I had no idea either, but Planned Parenthood was also the catalyst that started birth control, the contraceptives, and it started with Planned Parenthood, awarded um, small grants to conduct research into birth control pill in 1948. The first large scale human trial of birth control pill was carried out where? Wasn't, wasn't with the white people. You know they wasn't going to research on them. It was done in Puerto Rico. More brown people. The testing was conducted in, in, in Puerto Rican women. And this was done informal and it wasn't done with their consent. They were told only that the drug prevented pregnancies, not that the drug was experimental or that they might experience potential dangerous side effects. Does this not remind you of the jab and where they wanted to conduct things around black people, brown people? So they did, oh, good old Margaret Sanger, birth control, the research on it, the clinical things that they did to Puerto Rican women that they used. And God knows the effect on that. I'm going to have to research that because I'm pretty sure the effect of it. But these are stuff that we don't talk about. So Planned Parenthood, again, founded by Margaret Singer. We already figured out that she's a eugenist. We already figured out that her goal was to exterminate the Negro. Something interesting that I didn't know about Planned Parenthood, and I'm going to put up some stats about this, too, just in case you guys didn't know. Uh, new research from the Life Issue Institute confirmed yet again, Planned Parenthood is targeting the minority mothers and unborn babies for abortions. Town Hall reports it's found that 86% of Planned Parenthood abortion facilities are in or near African-American and Latino neighborhoods. Well, her first one that she started back in 1916 was in Harlem. So what would make you think that her brainchild of Planned Parenthood would not continuously be in Black areas? And why would it be in Black areas? Mostly in walking distance of a project. Because it's super easy now for women, Black women, Brown women, can now go ahead and terminate the pregnancy on foot. Just walk over there and terminate to kill our boys, to kill our girls. 
And yes, I'm fan kill because that's what it is. And we're going to talk about that because, again, biology, I think, is lost on a lot of people. Some Planned Parenthood abortion stats. Planned Parenthood commits about 40% of the abortions in the United States. Their annual abortion count is up to over 354K and growing. 96.9% of pregnant women who seek help at Planned Parenthood have abortions. So pregnant women aren't going over there to get help. They're not getting referrals. They're not getting sonograms. They're going to terminate. According to the CDC, 38% of abortions are done in non-Hispanic Black mothers. So if you break it down, it's an estimate 134,000 a year. That's per day, 369 per hour is 15. Per hour, 15 babies are getting terminated, black babies, a day. So you want to talk about the stuff going on in Chicago, stuff going on in the hood. And we're not talking about right on every single corner in a black area, there's a Planned Parenthood that are taking our babies away. 15 per hour. And ain't nobody going to say nothing about it. These future doctors, lawyers, mothers, daddies, community, 15 an hour. And no one wanted to say anything about it. And some of y'all mad about the reversal of uh, Roe v. Wade? Y'all upset? There's a stat that I found. Um, I know it might be kind of small, um, but this shows that from last year, the annual changes of our birth rate. And if you can see what we annually always usually do, and I'm focused on my black folks. And if you see the negative, the annual change, we are down. We're not procreating anymore. Our birth rate are completely down. How are we going to have a community when there's nobody being born? And yeah, we have our problems and we know we do. We talk about that on a daily basis. But for me, there's no community if we're not, if we're not reproducing. Reproducing, I have always said, should be with mommy and daddy. When are we going to create mommy and daddy? And a lot of people get on here and talk and all these black women having all these baby by Pookie and Ray Ray. Let me be very, very clear. 40% of black women do not have children. From that stat that I just showed, birth rates are down. It has been down for over 40 years. So the, realistically, we're not having children. We're not creating in New York alone, more babies are getting, black babies are getting aborted than the whole dead population in New York. So we're not going to talk about that. We are arguing and we're bickering. We're doing all this gender crap and not even thinking about our children and not thinking about our community. And for me, that issue is bigger than you calling me a baby mama. Then you talking about weaves and acrylic nails. We don't have a community because we're killing our babies. Hmm. So I was watching um, some YouTube the other day, and I know in the... Um, thumbnail, you see a picture of Cynthia G. And she's made it no secret that she believes that our uh, what we should do to fix the issue of Black women and Black men being together. 
and what we should do to fix the issue if black mothers are the ones that are raising these boys to be single parent. Uh, we're single parents, so we're raising these men, and we're the ones that creating bad men. That her solution is to kill the babies in our womb. She's made it very clear for the past year that mothers that this pisses me off. Mothers that are pregnant and find out they're having a boy. You should kill them. I, this is the most disgusting, ludicrous thing I have ever heard on the internet amongst black people. And the fact that I don't even hear really women speaking up about it pisses me off even more because these are our wounds that she's making tombs. These are our, this, it's, it's in me. And you want me to kill something because somebody, a man hurt you? Lord be with me. Let me play this. Hear from the horse's mouth. Because the solution that I proposed is the only solution. And the reason I know it's the only solution because nobody has presented another solution. Now, what they will say is, oh, that's extreme. Oh, that's not the way. They'll say it's genocide. They'll say it's eugenics. Most people don't know the context or the definition of the words that they use so people are running around saying that this is eugenics because i guess it's too hard to type into google to find out that eugenics is racial whitening that is what it's called it was practiced with two different races we're going to get into that you cannot have eugenics taking place with selective breeding within one's own race but because there is an unwillingness to face reality you have people who are acting accordingly and speaking accordingly. Most black women, the solution that they want is for black men to wake up discussing. If you put in eugenics and racial whitening, what you're going to come up is with racial whitening, because that is what eugenics is. It is racial whitening. And I'm going to show you guys something to prove to you that eugenics is racial whitening. And normally, let me share the screen really quickly because normally I wouldn't use Wikipedia as a source, but I'm gonna tell you why I'm using them as a source. I'm using them as a source because of this reference list. This is why I'm using Wikipedia as a source because of all of these references down here. This is why I'm using this page, by the way because references they have 15 different references here and if you click on the hyperlinks they will take you to the information that they seen solution because the solution so we heard her solution her solution is pretty much abort your baby but let me tell you the ignorance that i heard and this is so people okay and this is our fault these are people that listen to all these folks and won't do your own research to make sure that these people that have platforms are correct the most idiotic dumbest try not to cuss okay let's not cuss all right this lady had the audacity to say you <laughs> Eugenics is just, um, what she called it? Racial, I'll put it up because I have it. Racial whitening. This is what this woman said. Eugenics is just racial whitening. And you can see this was done back in, in Brazil. What racial whitening is, is to alleviate the Negro, they believe in procreating with white people to whiten up their race. They felt that the Aryan race was superior. And so in order um, to eliminate, eliminate the Negro race, they will procreate with white people. 
Racial whitening, yes. I can agree that is a part of eugenics. But is that all eugenics is? No. And a quick Google search, madam, will tell you that that's not all eugenics is. Like, what are we, what is, why do we let people have a, I mean, why do we let people have a platform to spew hate, to spew murder, and to spew lies, and it doesn't get checked? There was not a one person in that chat, and it was thousands of women. Yeah, that's right. It ain't eugenics. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. All a bunch of wrong, loud, wrong broads. The definition of eugenics. The study of or belief in the possibility of improving the qualities of the human species or a human population, especially by such means as discouraging reproduction by persons having genetic defects or presumed to be inheritable, undesirable traits. That's negative eugenics, and there's a negative and a positive eugenics. Or encouraging reproduction by persons presumed to have inheritable desirability traits, desirable traits. So the racial whitening would be eugenics, but that's a positive eugenics. But there's also a negative eugenics. You want to know what the negative eugenics are? I know you do. Eugenic policies have been conceptually divided into two categories. Positive, and that's the ones that I just told you about. And then there's negative. Negative eugenics aim to eliminate through sterilization. We've already said that before with Margaret Singer or segregation, Margaret Singer. Those deemed physically, mentally, or morally undesirable. This includes abortions, sterilization, and other me methods of family planning what are we talking we just let people say whatever and it doesn't get unchecked this lady is lying to her she got her subscribe subscri over a hundred thousand people calling herself no i'm not a eugenics because all eugenics is is racially whitening and i'm not saying that black men are saying and that's why they're going to becky and mart so no, you're just as worse as Margaret Singer. You are telling women to abort their boys. If we don't have any black boys, madam, by deeming and by aborting them, that's eugenics. Let's pull the definition up again because I don't, I don't, for the slow ones in the back. The study of or belief in the possibility of improving the qualities of human species or a human population. So you think that because you don't deem black men good or valuable, which Margaret Sanger, and for years we've been two thirds of human beings because they didn't see black people valuable either. And that's why it's so easy to put Planned Parenthoods in, in black areas because they don't care about us, they want us extinct and your resolve because of your man issues is to terminate black babies, black boy babies. How is that any different from Margaret Singer? The unfit, the undesirable, it's the exact same thing. I don't know if people just get on here and didn't even, couldn't pack. Okay, um, I'm not gonna joke. Because I promise you, I think people just get their GED on the back of an ice cream truck and then get on here and spew hate and think that because they say it loud and matter of factly that it's right and it's absolutely wrong. She can't even tell you the correct definition because she did not do her research and it's only a Google search away. Genocide. Genocide, the deliberate and systematic destruction of a group of people because of their ethnicity, nationality, religion, or race. If you break it up, as in Greek, 
Uh, the Gino is race, tribe, or nation, and the Osage side is killing. It's the killing of a race, tribe, or nation. If you, if you, if you terminate our black boys, how are we going to create a nation of black people, madam? That is genocide. I mean, I got a college degree, you know, I got it a long time ago, but I think my daughter that six could read and can tell you that what you're saying, madam, it's eugenics. You, what you say is helping in the genocide of our community. You are no better than Margaret Singer and it's pathetic. She also says something in that live. And I'm going to pull this up because for some reason she doesn't think that it's she thinks that it's also not eugenics because you can't you cannot be a eugenicist and think that it black and black. No, it has to be two races. Two races have to conspire against um, to terminate you for eugenics. Case in point here, since we, you know, just give her a little history lesson so she can maybe go back and retract some of the stuff that she says. All right, history for sterilization on Latina woman. Between 1930s and the 19, I believe it was 60s, I can't see my, my mouse anyway. <laughs> Approximately one third of the female population in Puerto Rico was sterilized, making it the highest rate of sterilization in the world. Some argue that the pressure of increased sterilization procedures was, was a targeted practice to decrease, decrease the high level of poverty and unemployment. The government blamed these issues on overpopulation on the island. The legalization of contraceptions in Puerto Rico and the Puerto Rican government passage of a law allowing sterilization to be conducted at the discretion of a eugenics board. Both occurred in, uh, occurred in 1937. Madam Cynthia Jean, eugenics can happen within one community, within one race. You are, I, I mean, it's just all kinds of wrong. And we, and people are listening to these platforms and spewing these wrong things and no one has the gall enough to question, to read a book, to see if these are true. And she had the audacity to say a uh, Google search. Madam, these are all stats on Google. A eugenics board in Puerto Rico sterilized their own women because they were scared of population and poverty. A eugenics board. So please miss me with that. Japan. Under a eugenics law, which was effective from 1948 to 1996, people were made to undergo operations to prevent them uh, from having children deemed inferior. This is in Japan. Japan people were sterilizing their women as well. And they were doing it to prevent children they deemed inferior. This has happened all over the world amongst all other countries, other cultures, but it was all the same culture that was doing it to their own people. So madam, yes, you can be a eugenics. It doesn't take two cultures to want to terminate and to eliminate your own people. You, madam, it's disgusting. <sighs> yeah, I apologize. So, Cynthia G, and this is all gonna come around, um, but it's all about abortion. And with the reversal of 
um, well, it being overturned, Roe versus Wade, and how I'm proud of that. And the fact that we have our own people helping out a system that was supposed to and did and is doing a genocide of black folks and to have a black woman with black babies think it's okay to get on YouTube that's shown around the world to terminate our boys. So how, when do we find out if we're having a boy? And no one, ain't nobody gonna ask her that? No, okay, that's fine. <laughs> if you have, uh, well, these are different te tests that you can take, but in general, ultrasounds may reveal the sex organs by 14 weeks, but they aren't considered fully accurate until 18 weeks. So, Cynthia. Women don't know if they're having a little boy or a little girl between 14 weeks and 18 weeks. So you're telling women to wait roughly what, three, three months to be three months pregnant and then have an abortion? Three months pregnant? And then if it's a boy, have a... You want to know what a baby looks like want to look looks like at 14 weeks to make it real this is a baby at 14 weeks and you are telling black women to murder their baby that looks like a baby it this is a baby At 14 weeks, this is what your child looks like. She don't know what the picture does. She got kids. I know she's seen sonograms. <sighs> Babies can feel pain very early in their life because they're babies. Four weeks, the baby's pain receptors begin to develop, followed by nerve fibers that carry messages to the brain. At four weeks, these babies do this. At six weeks, the baby will respond to your touch. At eight weeks, the cerebral cortex starts to develop and will eventually grow to have the same number of nerves as an adult. At eight weeks, how amazing is God? At 10 weeks, if a baby is touched at 10 weeks, his or her hands and eyes will open and close. At 12 weeks, not only can the baby smile, he or she now can swallow and respond to sim simple simulations of the skin. And at 20 weeks, the fetal brain has uh, the full Y'all, excuse me, I had Diet Coke. The fetal brain has the full uh, complement of the brain cells present in adulthood, ready and ready and waiting to receive pain signals in the body and their electrical activities can be recorded by standard. I'm not even going to try. Babies can feel pain as early as four weeks. What are we what what are what are we debating? God is good. There's no there's no debate if if it's at conception is life. As soon as that egg gets fertilized, it has a complete DNA already constructed what their their hair is going to be, the gender at conception. They know the race, all of it at conception. And at four weeks, the baby can feel and can understand what pain is. Usually between five and six weeks, the baby has a heart. 
What are we debating here? The right to kill them or not? What are we saying that we need to wait until the baby has a full grown face and eyes and blinking and can swallow and can understand touch, can understand when you hear Cynthia G to kill them? Is that what you're suggesting? I'm going to go there. <clears throat> Types of abortion. In 2017, about 39% of abortions were conducted with pills or medication. These can generally be taken up to 10 weeks after the first day of your last period. Uh, the other 61% was done through in an in-clinic surgical procedure, such as a vacuum, aspiration, or dilation and evacuation, d &E. Now, I know these are just words. Um, I'm going to play uh, something again that I saw on Cynthia G that bothered me. But let, I'm going to say real quick the reason why I am pro-life. Because I wasn't. Uh, I was pro-choice. My body, my choice. Until I realized that it is your body and you can do whatever you want to your body. But that baby has his or her own body. When have you ever heard a woman that was having a boy automatically say, well, you know, I'm binary now because now I got a penis. Ma'am, how'd you get a penis? Well, I have a boy, so now I have a penis. Do you know how dumb you would sound if you said that? Because it's not true. That penis don't belong to you. That's your baby. That's your little boy. Well, you know, I'm pregnant now, so that means I got two hearts and I got uh, four hands and I, I got two vaginas. To, which, how you get all that? Well, I'm pregnant and it's my body. No, ma'am. Your body holds a whole other body. That body has a different blood type, different DNA, different heart. It's not your body. That baby is inside of your body. And by laws, it has to be protected. The only difference from that baby is the location. That baby just happens to be located inside of you but it's his own baby. It's his own body. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> I'm going to be smart now. What you going to be smart now for? Well, I'm pregnant, so that means I got two brains. You got two brains? My body, my choice. I got two brains now. No. So I became pro-choice first understanding that, that it's not my body. And then also I was taking my daughter to her pediatrician and her pediatrician's office is right next to a Planned Parenthood. And of course my, her doctor is black. She has her um, own practice in a black neighborhood by Fisk University. And right next to my daughter's doctor is a Planned Parenthood. And when I was taking her out from her getting her shots for school, um, they were, of course, picketing and protesting. And I know they were looking at me like I was crazy because they was like, what's this girl doing? She got a baby. What's she about to do? So <laughs> it was like looking at me crazy. Um, but I talked to um, the guys because I've never talked to them before. I've seen them picket all the time. Again, they stayed there next door to the pediatrician. And I had I took the time out to talk. And they showed me videos. And when I tell you, I was just disgusted. And what pissed me off is that we have been lied to. We have been brainwashed. That my body, my choice bullshit is wrong because it's not your body. The idea that, well, what if they were raped and incest? That happens 1%. So again, I don't know why people use a very small minority to justify a whole minority or majority. It's absolutely wrong. The talking points are absolutely flawed. And I don't care what way you try to turn it. The baby is alive at conception. It's life. And it's the murdering of kids that we're doing. 
Let me play this. This absolutely sickened me. To, to that procreate with black men, which my son is a black male, to to go and abort their black boys is absolutely ludicrous. Because if no, you have not. ever had to terminate your pregnancy, which I have because I'm disabled, and it was the most gut wrenching thing I've ever gone through, you don't know what that feels like and what it does to a person. So for you to go you through and spread the masses, how does it feel to be left a single mother where the man tells you I'm not going to raise my child at all, and you? You gotta take responsibility. How gut I am a single mother, and okay? Yes. And I am raising my son alone. And, and I'm a single mother man, because my son's father son was murdered, man, okay? So man. I do know what it is to be a single mother and to raise my son alone. So okay, you don't that's sit just here and- psychologically damaging as an abortion. People get abortions all day, every day, stop it. Yes, if they do. Yes, the they do. Generation. Yes, they do have Black abortions every abortions. day and all day. And if you've Black never gone abortions. through it, you don't know what it's like to go through and have that and, and to go through the and trauma because it's traumatic. Woman. And you can't speak for every woman. It's not traumatic for everyone. And neither can it's you. Not. Have you had one? I don't need I don't need to have one to know that it's not traumatic for every woman. It's not. Well, if you've never gone through it, then don't speak on something you can't attest no, actually, to. actually, I can't speak on it. I worked at an abortion clinic. where they Then you should them. know. If you've worked at an abortion clinic, then you it. should know. When you walk up those doors, you've got people with signs and everything else protesting, and they, they don't even know why you're through. there. Okay? It is a very traumatic experience, no, and it is not, nothing not that you anyone. should promote. It should be somebody else's personal experience if they want to go through it. But for you to sit up there and to tell people when you've not walked a day in their shoes that they should sit up there and throw away their kids when you have not gone through it yourself is the most hypocrite thing that I have ever heard in my no, life. Not. No, it's not. It no, is. It's not. No, it's it not. is. Telling a woman that she needs to be a single mother and go through the hardship of being a single mother in poverty, you're wrong for telling them Who's that. Who's saying that they would be in poverty? Them do best for them. You're talking I'm about two them. things that Maybe. I have experienced myself, being a I single mother of a black it. male and Man, have terminated care. my pregnancy. I have done both. So Man, you're speaking to somebody who has raised her child alone and is going to school to be a doctor Okay, so to tell me my son and is it would a have been much easier cold. if you had gotten an abortion. And if it would have been much easier to do that if you had gotten an abortion. Keep it a buck. You will not what, have what would have been more easier if I would have gotten an abortion. You would have terminated your pregnancy. Stop it. That lady said that that woman has a son. The father was murdered, and she said your life would have been just easier if you would have killed him, killed your son. Why ain't nobody saying shit? This broad had the audacity again to say that is no trauma when a woman has an abortion how do you know you have you ever had one no i didn't but i can tell you that it hasn't mental health effects of abortion Um, it's been reported that there are dramatic changes in mental health in women who's had an abortion the study examined medical information from over 177, um, excuse me, over 877,000 women, of which 164 had an abortion. The women had an abortion were 81% more likely to experience mental health struggles. They were 40, 34% more likely to develop anxiety disorder, 37% more likely to experience depression. 110% more likely to abuse alcohol, 155% more likely to commit suicide, 220% more likely to abuse marijuana. You mean to tell me that there's no ramifications of having an abortion to a woman's mentality? 
Are you, you are sick. And the idea that we're not even talking about the mental effects of women, the idea that women are, are silently struggling, something that they thought would just help them out and not struggle in the world and be okay is actually keeping them in a struggle. Higher rate of suicide, higher rate of depression, anxiety, drug and alcohol abuse. And you want to tell me there's after an abortion, everything is a okay. And you are just willy nilly telling black women to do it. And then you want to know why, why black women act the way that we act. You want to know why we have addiction problems and why we overweight and why we drink and because we're we're suffering silently, which is not silent anymore, I guess. I don't know, because you can see it and how we act and how, how you can see it. You can see our problems and then wonder why we can't have real good relationship with our men. Because the acts that we're doing, we're getting rid of our babies. And we're not understanding that the after fact, the mental issues that are plaguing our women. You are absolutely disgusting. Every single woman content creator needs to be speaking out. You can, I'm so tired of hearing all the women just talking about black women, y'all are, y'all are this and y'all are that and y'all are that. And you have a whole black woman on the internet wanting to kill our children and then telling people that you're going to be okay once you do it. Do women who have an abortion risk their mental health? The provocative new study shows that women who have an abortion face an increased risk of mental health problems, including substance abuse, anxiety, and depression. Results indicate quite consistently that abortion is associated with moderate to high increased risk of psychological problems subsequent to the procedure. The authors wrote in the study, <clears throat> I'm going to play some stuff um, <clears throat> because I don't, I really don't think that we understand how disgusting abortion is. Um, we, we don't. And we don't because we just say the word and it's, it, it, oh, just get rid of it. Be all, it's a, you have your whole life ahead of you. So if y'all can give me a minute, I want to play something for you guys. So we can make it um, real. We keep saying a thing, but if we don't see a thing. The abortionist uses a speculum like this. This is placed inside the vagina and opened using this screw on the side, allowing the abortionist to see the cervix, the entrance to the uterus. The cervix acts as a gate that stays closed for the duration of pregnancy, protecting the baby until it is ready for birth. The abortionist uses a series of metal rods called dilators like these, which increase in thickness and inserts them into the cervix to dilate it, gaining access to the inside of the uterus where the baby resides. If the baby has a heartbeat, fingers, toes, arms, and legs, but its bones are still weak and fragile. The abortionist takes a suction catheter like this one. This is a 14 French suction catheter. It's clear plastic, about nine inches long, and it has a hole through the center. It is inserted through the cervix into the uterus. The suction machine is then turned on with a force 10 to 20 times more powerful than your household vacuum cleaner. 
The baby is rapidly torn apart by the force of the suction and squeezed through this tubing down into the suction machine, followed by the placenta. Though the uterus is mostly emptied at this point, one of the risks of a suction DNC is incomplete abortion. Essentially, pieces of the baby or placenta left behind. This can lead to infection or bleeding. In an attempt to prevent this, the abortionist uses a curette to scrape a lining of the uterus. The curette is basically a long-handled curved blade. Once the uterus is empty, the speculum is removed and the abortion is complete. The risks of suction DNC include perforation or laceration of the uterus or cervix, potentially damaging intestine, bladder, and nearby blood vessels, hemorrhage, infection, and in rare instances, even death. Future pregnancies are also at a greater risk for loss or premature delivery due to abortion-related trauma and injury to the cervix. In 13 and 24 weeks of pregnancy. After administering anesthesia, the abortionist uses a weighted speculum, like this one, that opens the vagina wide. Let me unmute. I know it's graphic, but I, I do not care. You have to see a thing. People are so concerned about, well, why, why did they overturn it? And what that what is that does it really mean anything for black folks and what does it mean what does it mean i don't care if you don't know what happens when a woman goes to an abortion clinic then you don't know the depths of it it's horrific now that was in the first trimester um there's a second one that I had on the second trimester, but I'm going to do the third trimester. And this is where Cynthia G believes that, oh, is it? Yeah. Well, it's, it doesn't matter. She said, get rid of them. So this is what she wants our black women. She's for black women, right? Okay. Let's, okay. So this is what she wants you to go through. Sidebar, <clears throat> why, why does she never ask or say marry before you carry? How come that's never anything that she talks about? It's just kill them. No, no, because she says that they don't want to marry us. But they're, <clears throat> because our marriage rates are, are low. Well... If we're acting like you, madam, I can definitely understand why they don't want to marry us. Let me, I want to play this. Um, <clears throat> this was on this, uh, they have one for the second trimester, but for time's sake, I'm going to show the third trimester. Related. Because the baby is so large and developed, this procedure takes three or four days to complete. On day one, the abortionist uses a large needle to inject a drug called digoxin. Digoxin is generally used to treat heart problems, but a high enough dosage of digoxin will cause fatal cardiac arrest. The abortionist inserts the needle with the digoxin through the woman's abdomen or through her vagina and into the baby, targeting either the head, torso, or heart. The baby will feel it. Babies at this stage feel pain. When the needle pierces the baby's body and the digoxin takes effect, the life of the baby will end. The abortionist then inserts multiple sticks of seaweed called laminaria into the woman's cervix. They will slowly open up the cervix for delivery of a stillborn baby. While the woman waits for the laminaria to dilate her cervix, she carries her dead baby inside of her for two to three days. On day two, the abortionist replaces the laminaria and may perform a second ultrasound to ensure the baby is dead. If the child is still alive, he administers another lethal dose of digoxin. The woman then goes back to where she is staying while her cervix continues to dilate. If she goes into labor and is unable to make it to the clinic in time, she will give birth at home or in a hotel. In this case, she may be advised to deliver her baby into a bathroom toilet. The abortionist then comes to remove the baby and clean up. If she can make it to the clinic, she will do so during her severest contractions and deliver her dead son or daughter. If the baby does not come out whole, 
then the procedure becomes a DNE, a dilation and evacuation. And the abortionist uses clamps and forceps to dismember the baby piece by piece. Once the placenta and all the body parts have been removed, the abortion is complete. Late term abortions have a high risk of hemorrhage, lacerations and uterine perforations, as well as a risk of maternal death. Future pregnancies are also at a greater risk for loss or premature delivery from five to 13 weeks of pregnancy. How can anyone argue with me that abortion is not murder? Probably because they haven't seen it. And you know what? The 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 sickening part of it is that the women that her that have had abortions don't even know this. Abortion clinics make it very very um, a happy go lucky place, but people will tell you. And again, just just a Google search away with the women that are going into these facilities that they will not show you. Um, they won't tell you the procedure. All all the clamps and them tearing their little legs, tearing their arms, <clears throat> crushing their, their skull and taking those pieces out of the body piece by piece. They won't tell the women that. They won't let the women see the ultrasound to let them know that there's a life in there, scared that it might turn them away, scared that the woman might have a change of heart and show them and have a connection with the baby once she sees it. They won't do that. They don't give counseling, knowing that these women are at high risk of suicide, drug and alcohol abuse, depression and anxiety. They don't give aftercare. And you and you upset that it's been overturned. You mad? <clears throat> that the last one, that video that I saw hurt my heart. Because the baby feels that needle going in that in their hair, injecting poison to kill them. And if it doesn't, they, they inject it again. And the mother is walking around for a couple of days with a dead baby in her stomach. And then knowing that if she can't go to the clinic, that she might deliver her dead baby in a bathroom. That spirit, that soul that was curating in your tummy is left to be dumped in a toilet? <clears throat> and people are coming around telling me, are you pro-life? <clears throat> well, are you going to adopt them? Are you going, they going, there's gonna be such an influx in adoption agencies if these women don't have a board. It's gonna be all this gonna wanna shoulda couldas. The one thing for sure is that these abortion clinics are murdering our babies. <clears throat> this is a picture of an ultrasound of what we just saw. Um of the baby getting injected and um, the doctor seeing if the baby has has died. <clears throat> this is the pain of agony that baby feels going through an abortion. What about the baby? The baby feels the pain, but the baby has no voice. <clears throat> Who's going to speak up for the babies? Who? If not their mother, and we were, well, this is a woman's issue. No, it's not. This is a human rights issue. And this in the most purest form of human being, the untouched, the unscathed, the sweetness of a baby, and we're not protecting them. <clears throat> it's hard to watch. 
and being that I'm a mother, it's very, very hard to watch. But if we don't know what's going on and if you don't know what you're fighting for, and when I say I'm pro-life, if you don't know what that means and if you just think that we're fighting for a glop of sales, no, we're not. These are lives. So for the people that say, well, it's going to be such a, a whole lot of people that's going to be a, a, in adoption and adoption. Hold on. I'm going to drop the link. Just Bri, I know you wanted to come up and say something. I'm going to drop you the link so you can call in, darling. Um, and a couple people can, too. Um, I'll drop the link. <clears throat> So for those people that's it's going to be such an influx of people in adoption and adoption and you're going to adopt them, you're going to adopt them. So among the women who uh, who seek an abortion but were denied, more than 90 percent choose to keep and raise the child rather than place them for adoption. Let me repeat that again for the people in the back. Among the women who seek an abortion, but were denied, more than 90% choose to keep and raise their child rather than place them for adoption. So this idea is that, oh, well, I hope you're going to raise them, Courtney, you're pro-life. So I hope you take yourself down and adopt all the babies you want to keep alive. 90, over 90% 90 of women that can't have abortion decide to keep their baby and raise them. So miss me with that assumption because it's simply not true. Just more facts that I <clears throat> thought was interesting. Um, did you know that the majority of people who have abortions are already parents? <clears throat> so they know how to have a baby. Apparently they've had one. They're just irresponsible and don't want to get on any kind of the 34 contraception. So this doesn't happen. They just don't want to do that. They don't want to spend $5 for a Trojan. They don't want to spend $40 for a plan B. They would prefer to spend two, $300 to murder. Okay. Of those who received an abortion, 60% had one or more previous children according to a 2019 data from the CDC. And just random facts for us to know to keep in our heads as well, uh, has not had a previous abortion. So that is saying about four, well, about that 56% or 58 is small. Y'all know I'm old, um, <laughs> has not had a previous abortion. 24% has had one, 11 has had two, and 8% has had three. And um, so this is my fight. And this is another reason why I am pro-life. Abortion in America has contributed to the greatest decline in Black population since the first Black slaves arrived in America in the 1600s. According to the U.S. Census data, there were 18, well, over 18 million Black American citizens in 1960. Since Roe v. Wade legalized abortion in 1973, abortion has killed an estimated 20 million Black babies, more than the entire population of 1960. Twenty million of our babies are gone. They're gone. Our leaders, and 
You know, it's interesting because you can say, well, they probably, the parents didn't want them and who knows what they could have been. You don't know. And there's no justification for murder. If that's the case, then just why don't you just go to the prison systems and wipe out the whole prison system? Because what they're unfit, they're degenerates. So get rid of them. We don't know what those 20 million, what that could have been. Definitely would have doubled our population. So while we keep screaming, our voice don't have a chance and we're just 12 percent of the population where well, we could have been doubled. And had more voting power more economic power. We don't know because they didn't get a chance to, to live out any kind of potential because we, we decided to kill them. <sighs> so I'm gonna drop the link <clears throat> again for anyone that wants to call up. Um, I think I want to do something on Roe v. Wade. I don't think people understand that even that case was an absolute lie. It was a lie. We have been lied to, bamboozled, hoodwinked. Come on, uh, Malcolm. <laughs> Denzel. Roe v. Wade, the woman that was Roe, didn't even have an abortion. We doing all this on Roe v. Wade. The little lady didn't even have an birth. She had her baby. So it was all based on a lie. Oh, Jess, I didn't see you here, darling. Hello, hello. Hi, right, Courtney. Thank you for having me on. I really enjoyed the channel. Thank you. You're, it's kind of breaking up for me, Jess, so... Say oh, something. Is that okay now? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like choppy. Like, uh, 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 uh. Okay, I'll go out and come back in. Okay, I'm going to get Eugene. What's going on, you, Mr. Mr. Dr. Steele? Excuse me, hey. I was, I'm not going to call you that. This is my doctor. <laughs> What's going on? How are you? Hey, I'm doing fine. And you? Oh, well, I'm doing well. This is kind of an emotional thing for me. Um. So, but I think we need to talk about it. Yeah. You know, I've watched so many Black women content creators talk about um, deletions and all that and the irresponsibility of, you know, women. And what you just showed me, it, it, it really shocks me. And I hope that all ones who decide to go with the deletion have watched this mm -hmm. because because of their irresponsibility their selfishness um their failure to tell the um the man who they lay with to put on a condom and by the way I, men i'm not letting you off the hook either because you should have worn a condom okay mm -hmm. but just because of all of this you know, they feel like, you know, you know, uh, deletion, that's the easy way out. That's what it feels. But, you know, this is what they're facing. Mm -hmm. What you just, what you just showed us, you know, they, they don't seem to realize that. And maybe, and maybe there's a lot of them that go through it. And I've heard of this, these cases. I heard that you know, some of the ones who who had an abortion, you know, it it really messed it messed up their consciousness. It really did. Some, you know, felt you know really depressed about you know their decision because you know you know that person inside the body mm -hmm. will not have the mm -hmm. opportunity to see what life looks like, mm -hmm. to see what this earth looked like. I mean, whether the mother takes care of them or put them up for adoption, at least that, that baby get to see life. And when you see life, I mean, you have opportunity, but you know, the, you know, the one that, that was just deleted won't have that chance to do it. 
right? all because of their selfishness basically yeah. i agree with you um dr Steele. um <clears throat> i think that a lot of people don't know exactly even what happens during the procedure um and it's unfortunate as well because these places are not telling these women this they don't tell them and i've watched video after video of all when they, someone has it on the first trimester second trimester and third trimester and it's a consistent like it's because it sales so planned parenthood would tell you well we only do three percent of abortions yeah, but in that 3%, this is a multi-billion dollar company that you have, and it's based off of abortions. So their numbers are skewed, and that's a whole another for our conversation. But, um, you know, they're not telling because it's a sales job. And so in order to get the sale, because you're just a number, these people don't care about you or your child. To get the numbers, they're not going to be 100% honest with you. They're not going to show you exactly what happens during your, during your procedure. They're not going to show you your ultrasound to show that there is a baby in there. They're not going to let you hear the heartbeat. Because if they do, it's, that mother might have a change of, uh, change of thought. Oh, it's a heart because then it becomes real. A lot of times when you're pregnant as a mother, I understand. You just you don't you don't feel the kick. So and you can go by every day. You're not getting bigger. So you, the connection sometimes is not there at the beginning. But then once you start feeling a kick, and then once you see the ultrasounds and you see the baby face, and then you hear the heartbeat, and then like it took me a minute, and I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna be a mom. What? But but they won't tell you that and in essence for to get some money and then when you see exactly what happens that they tear the limb limb by limb and this is your child so and yeah. it's um yeah me watching those videos and th those were the those were the pg videos <laughs> yeah, so if, I, if i gotta do another stream <laughs> da, da, da. Okay. Yeah. It, it, now, I mean, you get to see, you know, what a procedure looks like, and you know, it's it's disheartening. It is. You know what 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 I just saw. Yeah. You know, I want to mention, you know, two women who think this way. First, Roe. I've I've heard. Um, I just recently heard something about Roe. Now you now you confirmed that mm -hmm. Roe did not um uh delete any of her babies, did she? No. Um Lord, let me I can't think of her name right now because it let me pull that up. Cause you know, Roe wasn't her real name in life. Um Lord, what was her name? Uh, it was on the tip of my tongue, too, because I was watching. Oh, yeah. Nor Norma. Norma, Norma. McCorvey. Norma McCorvey. Mm -hmm. She had three children. Um, just bring, I'm going to bring you up after Dr. Steele, just to just let you know. Um, but she had three kids. Um, one she gave up for, well, one she gave up for adoption, one her mother took, and then the third one was the young girl that this was about, um, and she was given up for adoption. So she didn't have abortion. She had three kids. Um, and did not raise them. No. You know. Right again, but she didn't, again, she didn't have an abortion. And what it really was, it was three women that um, was overzealous and trying to get a good case to blow their head up and they saw her as an easy ticket because she wanted an abortion she was poor and so they kind of used her as a catalyst for this so a lot of stuff that was told was lies i think a lot of people don't even know that in that particular case um she didn't want the kid but for it to go up to the supreme court she lied and said that she was um gang raped and to my recollection, she told she told the people she was gang gang raped by black men. What seriously? 
So she lied about being raped and that's how it was trying to, that's how they were able to pull it up to the Supreme Court because they were in Texas, Texas laws, Texas don't play. So again, we don't even, the, even the idea of Roe versus Wade was built on a lie. You know, you know, we talked about the irresponsibility and the selfishness and Norma, Norma. was basically the poster child for this. Mm -hmm. For that selfishness and carelessness. I mean, I mean, first of all, 1973, this is part of the free love era. Mm -hmm. Okay, where you know, you know, sex was really looked at more as a of a form of recreation rather than um uh, more of a you know, building a family. Yeah, the free love. So free it wasn't love. on some, you know, it's for, we're parenting, this is for, I mean, sex is obviously supposed to be enjoyable, but it was, they was planting their seeds and mm -hmm. hot girl summer was on its 10th degree. So mm -hmm. I agree it was. Um, but yeah, so even that whole case was built on a whole complete lie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I would, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Well, I'll say this. I'm going to get some other people up, too. I'm going to let you say your, your final words, too. But um, with her, she passed away back in 2017. And, you know, she became a starch pro-lifer. So a lot of people don't know she was upset and was doing a lot of um, speeches around the U.S. She became pro-life because she did not want her name associated with this case anymore. Yeah. And, and, and you know, and then also last night I've watched um ABC interview her daughter mm. one of her daughters and she said that she has not forgiven her at all she has not forgiven her for giving up on her mm -hmm. she she at first thought of visiting her mom on her deathbed but she decided not to and she has not regretted it mm. Mm. and I tell you something one more woman Mm -hmm. And I've heard of her so many times, Cynthia G. And I've heard of her so many times. I've heard of her talk about, you know, deleting black babies. I heard of another content creator who made, you know, you know comments about it and does not defend her. You know, she had the same position that uh, you have, mm -hmm. you know, against her. And I thought to myself, you know, my goodness, you know. And, and Sydney's not the only one. I mean, Tanya TKO once um, advocated for black mothers to, to, for, to force their sons to go uh, undergo bisectomies. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, what Cynthia and just displayed, helping women, helping women to enhance their selfishness and carelessness. And that's exactly what Cynthia is doing. Mm -hmm. And she's definitely not helping the black family at all. Yeah, not at all. So, all right. Let me get some more people. I appreciate you, Dr. Steele. Thank you. Congratulations officially. I know I haven't <laughs> chit chatted with you like that. So congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to get some of these super chats. I know I've been rambling um, and then I'm going to get you just, but let me get some of some these super chats. Kicking it with the killer. I appreciate you. Thank you for joining me. Jojo. Courtney, there goes my B1 sister. Are you on Twitter? So what's your Twitter name? I'm sharing this video to Twitter. I'll hit you up, Joe. I've been meaning to hit you up too. Eugene, thank you. Cynthia, Nyla, Tanya, and other genetically modified females. CCs do not, content creators, do not do their research very well. Everything they say are based on ignorance. Some of these women are witches sacrificing the baby. Marco Polo, you know what? I agree with you. And that's biblical. Sacrificing bloodshed. And you know, my God said that there will be no shed of innocent blood. Uncle Stu, I appreciate the love. Thank you, our pain. Thank you so much, you guys. I really appreciate you. Uh, one cool uncle. I believe you are a cool uncle. You look like it. 
<laughs> Thank you, guys. Let me bring up Jess Bree because um, I know she had some thoughts on this. What's going on with you? Hey. Hey, um, you sound yeah. better. <laughs> Thank God. I had to shut it down and, you know, restart it. I got, I'm um, on the Android. I don't do the iPhone. I'm not rich like you folks. <laughs> I'm on a payment plan, okay? So <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I, I kind of been in and out on your show, so forgive me um, mm -hmm. if I don't. Um, but I guess I, so. A few things I heard from the conservative, um, I believe Patriot Channel, that mm -hmm. he mentioned up. About um, Democrats knowing that this was coming down the pipeline, and for example, um, and I'm not in support of abortion, yeah. but I have had two abortions. But um, mm -hmm. for example, like when Ruth Bader Ginsburg, um, they allowed her to die on the bench, um, as opposed to replacing her when they had the chance. Mm -hmm. So that allowed Trump to get in, you know, his one of his picks. Um, which I thought that was interesting. Hmm. Um, and because she died while Obama was in office, if I'm not she mistaken. Did. Okay. She did. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And instead of them replacing her while she was there, they allowed her to die. So, yeah. Trump was able to, you know, get in there. And um, so I thought that was interesting. And mm -hmm. then he talked about how, um, you know, Obama kind of focused on L a lot of LGBT stuff as opposed to like, um, I guess tightening up their tightening up the Roe v. Wade, um, you know, statutes or whatever. So, um, but you know, as always, it always comes back to being Trump's fault. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's always it always ends up being Trump's fault some kind of way, you know. And yeah. I just find it funny that they're not taking responsibility. They also um, he also brought up um, something about, in reference to Mitch McConnell um blocking something i can't remember exactly i apologize yeah but yeah i just no. i just thought it, i'm sorry yeah. well no i i hear you and I, I completely understand and i know this topic is touchy where right. even anyone going in and out of office don't want to touch it don't want to talk about it um except really republicans the democrats well, go mm -hmm. ahead no i was just gonna say you know I wasn't um that um what you call um I was not that in tune with like politics um and I'm still not you know I'm still learning so I didn't you know when they mentioned that um you know abortion was constitutional and that a constitutional right and then someone else said it's not in the constitution and I had to think about it and I'm like well wait a minute no it's not a constitutional right so, you know, it just goes to show how informed mis people, how misinformed people are, including myself. I've been, yeah. you know, over the years, but I'm trying to educate myself more and more, you know, um, because I mean, it's only 50 years old. Like this whole Roe v. We Roe v. Wade thing has not been in place, um, you know, forever. And, and like I told my daughter, she's 25. I said, you know, we haven't always had the right to have an abortion. And you know, like right. so, and and people carry on as if it as though it's something that has just been, you know, a part of our American, you know, way. I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. And I've also researched Margaret Sanger too. I watch. I don't know if you watched the Mike, Mike Wallace interviews with her. I have. You have okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they. I kind of had to turn it off because after a while, I you know, and I was reading comps, some comments and, you know, somebody had mentioned, you know, if you know anything about, or, well, you watched it. So I, we, I learned that, um, her mother passed away when she was young, um, or really young mm -hmm. and she had a lot of trauma with that. And, mm -hmm. you know, just her, just a lot of stuff that personal stuff that she felt like, you know, she wanted to, bring forth and things like that so yeah it's just a real interesting situation I mean you know ultimately people are gonna have to stand before their God or well before God and 
you know. But I, I, I do not. Um, although I've had to, I talked to Jess Pearlie. I don't know if you know who she is, mm-hmm. and she was, you know, she was asking me some really some some kind of tough questions, you know, about my abortions. Um, and like I said, I had two, and I'm not proud of that. Um, and I made a lot of mistakes, you know. And well, let me let me ask you because um, I think what doesn't get talked about is the after effect. Mm-hmm. Um, so before you, you answer that, the after effects of it, when you went to the abortion clinics, um, did they show you the procedure that was going to be done? No. And also, if I may add, um, um, I don't mean to impose uh, another um, YouTuber on your show, but I yeah, was say, yeah. this, so this person asked me, do did they promote, um, do I feel like they promoted more to Black people, like, you know, promote abortions mm-hmm. to Black people? And so after I thought, I didn't think about this so after I hung up, but I think I'm not sure that they necessarily promote it to black people but i know that they're obviously they're in the hood of course so that is promotion technically Mm -hmm. but when i went there you know to inquire and get the information and stuff it's not like they say well you know um have you considered adoption um they don't offer that alternative you know i would say that they don't do um, it's referrals. And so they, the question right. is doing the referral. So no, they don't do referrals. And again, it's because it's a sales job. Right. So you're just another number to increase their profit, profitability, excuse me. So it's just right. sales. So they're not going to do anything to deter you. So a referral right. is a determined. You listening to the heartbeat determined. You seeing the ultrasound is a determined. Them acting like it's easy breezy is a determined. You're not knowing what's happening to your body is a determinant. And right. for me, it's kind of um, I'm thinking as other things, the side effects is, you know, now black women, we're having a hard time, not necessarily getting pregnant, but we're dying when we're pregnant. We're, you know, having a baby is life or death for a lot of us. And I'm thinking, well, what has happened? What why is it? And I do believe that because of these procedures that are happening, that are scraping our uterus and scraping our our things out of our bodies, how in the world can we have a healthy child? Well, Courtney, I'll push back on that just a little bit, only because there are, and I'm not trying to be anecdotal, but Mm -hmm. I know um, quite a few people, women, um, people with vaginas, (laughs) women, who have had multiple abortions and they get pregnant, you know, just like that. Um, yeah. Let's see. So, I know two, I know two women that's passed away because of their abortion. Specifically because of their abortion. Mm-hmm. Okay, because I, I just, you know, I, I don't, you know, I'm not aware, but I, you know, I, I hear you. Yeah. Um, so there's, uh, and again, you not saying that yours anecdotal. I know a lot of people go on to have healthy babies, but there right. are percentage of women that can't have babies because of this. There are people that have problems with having this. So, and again, with, I'm not sure if you saw the video that I just state, sh- show, but the doctors are telling you the higher, the trimester that you have the abortion in, the higher risk that you have mm-hmm. and death is a risk. Okay, and I've known, I knew, I I do know a couple of women who have had late-term abortions, and I'm not saying anything, um, I'm not trying to be right in what I did because I, you know, or justify anything. I just felt like, I know, as soon as I found out, I was like, oh, okay, you know, I'm not waiting around, like, you know what I mean? So, and this was almost 20 years ago, actually, so, and that doesn't, I'm not justifying that either. But, um, you know, I just, I got so many opinions. I don't want to take up your time, but um, I, I appreciate you um, for taking my call, though. And um, No problem. Let me get to Uncle Stu. If you okay. want to come back up, I don't have any problem. Let me get to Uncle Stu, and I'll just drop you in the back. Okay. You know. I'll hang out in the back for a little bit. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Let me see. Well, where is it letting me just drop you in the back? All right. I got you. 
Uncle Stu. What's going on? What's How going on? How are you? How are you doing? Boy, you blowing up the YouTube streets. I tell you, between you and Nathan Daly, y'all just got me <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> like, like y'all ain't leaving a brother no room to have a stream. I tell you. <laughs> I'm not messing with Nathan Daly, okay? His stream lasted almost nine hours. Uh, uh, yeah, I he, took he my braids out, out rebraided. I'm not messing with that Nathan Daly. I ain't gonna look, 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 Nathan forgot I got gray hair. I can't stay up late. I don't know who he think he is. <laughs> 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 but know. no, you did a great stream. Um, you know, I, I will definitely ask your permission to like, you know, clip two things. You know, I'm gonna talk mm -hmm. about this tomorrow. But I'm coming from a totally different angle than than both you and Nathan did. So I'll briefly say it here. Um, I know a lot of people is very upset at what the Supreme Court did, but this is not new. Um, and just to let everybody know that this is not new. Everybody talks about, you know, why did they overturn this? This is precedent. This is precedent. But we forget that there was another precedent that the Supreme Court overturned as well. And that precedent was even longer than this precedent. You know, there was a precedent for 60 years and we overturned it called Brown versus Board of Ed. And we overturned the Percy. Ferguson. Um, I'm going to speak about that tomorrow. Um, from a political standpoint, I don't think everybody's understanding that the Supreme Court overreached in the 1970s. Um, mm -hmm. They overreached bad because there is nothing written in the Constitution. There's nothing written on the federal level as far as, you know, um, this is this is this is the case. So we really have to take a deep breath, take a deep dive, really understand what's going on. And then what I always explain to people now, I'm with you, I'm pro-life. Mm -hmm. But as I explain to people, this is really giving you back the power that you that you really always wanted. Um, what is that power? The power to control what's going on in your local and state governments. Because this is going to force you to now get your behind up and vote. Stop waiting every four years. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what's shocking everybody because Biden was the head of the crime bill back in the early 90s. Biden was the head of, of, of that Obamacare, which mm -hmm. also fueled a lot of money into, um, you know, these abortion clinics. And now he's there all over again. So I don't understand why um, people are not really able to see, but we're going to bring it out. We're going to fight on all the fronts. You know, we're going to fight on all the fronts. Um, I want, I want women to understand that, that there is a difference between, you know, abortion rights and, your health and is mm -hmm. and those are two totally different um things you know what you go through as a woman in your health is is one thing and yes we should support women's health making sure that you can go to your old, old you know ob uh, obgyn mm -hmm. doctors etc and, and we need and we need to advocate for that um we need to also make sure that the insurance companies is can can you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. be able to pay for certain you know uh birth control but this is also going to put some D discipline on, on my brother's side. It's going to put some P discipline on the woman's side. And so yeah. we need a little bit of, of accountability on both sides. Um, not only that, but we also need to take more of the deep dive, you know, because if we are running around saying I'm B1, if we are running around talking about I'm FBA, if we run around talking about I'm Adolf's, then this should be a championship for all of them. Because the reason you ain't getting your reparations is because um, you done buried it. Mm. Because if you look at the numbers of the amount of, of, of deletions that took place in our community, we could have already had the numbers to get the reparations. So guess what? Your reparations went with Biden. Your reparations went with all of these, you know, deletions. Yeah. You know, if you want to go number for number for number. And um, we can, because right. that's the day you want to talk about black folks don't have no power and power because right. it ain't many of us. It ain't many of us. You know, you you so so if you want to go down that rabbit hole, we ain't gotta go. I'm mm -hmm. gonna go direct and, and say it. Um, you know, I come straight from the from the political side, you know. So mine is looking at the government, what is the policy, what is the bills? A lot of times what we are saying is we'll say, Oh, well, here's this bill that's about health but they'll package it with a whole bunch of other little bills mm -hmm. and then put it together. Like I tell people, a real bill is only about 10 pages, but by the time it reached the president's desk, you are talking about almost a thousand pages. Mm -hmm. They done put all kinds of stuff in that little Trojan horse package. 
So by the time they sign it off, you trying to figure out why your rights ain't there because they didn't put it up in all of this other crazy stuff. So what I'm trying to get my people to understand is you have to begin to, to study. And if you don't know, find those people that, first of all, is not on the left, not on the right, but can go straight down the middle and explain it to you like a, like a five-year-old child. If that's how you got to learn politics, fine. Mm -hmm. Learn it like a five-year-old child. Go back to, to school where it says separation of government, legislative, judicial, executive, but you got it on the state level. So yeah. it's time to fight and, and understand. Um, it's time to stop saying, I'm looking for this. I want this. I'm begging for this. No. What do we need to do? So whether you're a pro-life, pro-choice, my question to you is, do you really understand the law? Do you understand policy? Do you understand who executes these policies? Do you know how to fight for or against the policies? Do you know how to do basic? Now we can all just go to Google. Do you know how to do a basic government search mm -hmm. in those things? So we 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 got to be able to do that. There's some other deep dives that um you know I'm not going to derail the platform because you're on um, focus on one thing. Um, when I say to you or say to anybody, uh, this is discipline on both sides because there's open cases that can happen yeah. if men are not careful. Because if a woman is desperate enough, um, she can make some charges that isn't right mm -hmm. just to get what she wants you know um on the other half is you know maybe we need to look at more adoption you know it says that you can adopt children but people don't understand that's that costs almost 10 to 15 yeah man dollars it's a, it's a, to adopt. Big, it's a process it is thousand dollars you're absolutely right it is a lot of money so just saying put the child up for adoption they're gonna get adopted out it is wrong we got, we do know that cases of, of white people that had the money, wanted to adopt black kids and black organizations said, no, they need to be in a black family. Okay. Mm -hmm. Find a black family that's willing to adopt. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we got a lot of issues that, that needs to be taught, but we just got to take the deep breath and, and, and really begin to communicate. So again, I just wanted to come up here, support you. I love what you're doing and what you're saying, you know, you and Nathan, y'all, y'all, y'all done aged me up a whole nother two years. I tell you. You know, I hope y'all leave me something to talk about tomorrow. No, you got this. You got this. <laughs> what you were saying. But you're, you're absolutely right. And I think, honestly, a good, you know, it's what does this mean? What does this mean for men? Yeah, there, there, you know? there's a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What does it mean for men now? Because no longer the days because they are men that's, oh, he go $300. Go ahead and take care of it. That, hey, hey, I mean, we're hey. gonna be uh, real. Let's be real. So men right. were using it was a tool as well, too. That's right. And and, and let's be honest. Let's you yeah. know, let's call a spade a spade. Let's no longer cap. Mm -hmm. I get it. They're talking about hot girl summer is over. Well, here's the reality: hot girl summer is not gonna be over just because this case is over. Mm -hmm. you, you, you see what I'm saying? Because for every hot girl summer, there's a hot dude summer too. Hmm. Yeah, you know we got laws that says you're not allowed to delete nobody with a gun did that stop anybody from doing it um, we got laws that say do not you know rob you did yeah, that stop, did that stop, stop robbery? No. Does that stop larceny it, so the law is not going to stop anybody it hmm. only puts a check on those who already wants to be in the moral conduct of the law yeah you know but again that's a deeper dive deeper question but you know love well, you you got that tomorrow i got that tomorrow yeah i'm going to poly okay side we over here we play hot potato i got this yeah, part. Yeah. You, got so you, do, you do hot potato and then i got the police over here he just eight hours i can't hang i'm old i can't hang i can't hang. i'm done with him <laughs> <laughs> but no, i appreciate coming up here and, and i hope i made some sense to the conversation you did and i appreciate you and thank you mm -hmm. for that information and um that's something that i want to look at more too um i think this does put the power more in our hands taking it back to the state Absolutely. And I'm praying that we get more involved and again also with accountability we got to be responsible yeah. With everything that we have been allowed to do, right? Um, we, it's taking the responsibilities and we're not adults anymore. And, and I think a lot of people are upset about this being overturned is because now you actually have to be responsible. Absolutely. 
Now you just can go around the corner to the hood to get that done and then come back home. Yeah. No. And and we really need to know what, you know, um, a lot of people is is funny, but a lot of people really don't know who Clarence Thomas is. Mm -hmm. They don't realize that, um, you know, I got the thumbnail going up. Clarence Thomas strikes back. They really don't know who he is. They really don't know how important he is. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they tried to call him the enemy of the nineties, but in fact, He's been trying to save us for a long time, but that's yeah. another story. You they know. hit him with that Anita Hill joint. That's what oh, that they, was. They, they, say, say. <laughs> <laughs> all that got clouded when she said she saw a pube on a coke. That's all of it got clouded. It, it, every day, every day. And but but the only positive thing is when you go back and see the clips, you see how many black people came out of Princeton. Mm. They had a whole lot of black people testifying during that day, but. No, I think a lot of people, especially um, those in their 30s and their 20s, they really need to understand who was Clarence Thomas and, and why he got what he got. Because if you had the manosphere back then, you know, it would have be, been a little bit different. Yeah, it would have been. It would have been. It would have been. So, you know, Clarence Thomas strikes back. So we got to talk about it. All we got to right. talk about it. But you know, I, let Nate know. Don't come on my stream thinking we're going to hang out for nine hours, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I appreciate it. I'll be watching, watching right. the rest of the stream in the back. Thank you. Bye. You welcome. You. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Simon. Are you there? Yo. What you got for me? Hold up. Someone say they are disappointed in you, Courtney. Well, Gregory. I'll drop the link and you can let me know why you're disappointed, my darling. I, I, just want, I wanted to bring it back to like that video that you brought up, which was quite interesting in terms uh, of, of um, the procedure. Yeah, yeah. Big up to Uncle Stu. Like he, he's going on some politics, but I ain't, I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about the female. So like the female experience and what that actually looks like in terms of if you're a man and you're with a female you want to see the video again yes please my love please that would be nice if you could i don't know if you can but oh no i can't hold on after administering anesthesia the abortionist let's go to we'll do say i didn't want to do the second second trimester babies are so large this greater access facilitates a late-term abortion Late-term abortion requires that the cervix be prepared 24 to 48 hours in advance with laminaria. Laminaria is a type of sterilized seaweed that absorbs water over 8 to 12 hours and swells to several times its original diameter. Once removed, metal dilators can be used to further open the cervix as needed. Once the cervix has been stretched open, the suction tube is placed inside. A baby at 20 weeks gestation is as big as the length of my hand from head to rump, not counting the legs. The suction machine is turned on and pale yellow amniotic fluid surrounding the baby is suctioned out through the catheters. With babies this big, they don't fit through catheters this size. The baby's bones and skull are too strong to be torn apart by suction alone. This is a sofa clamp. A sofa clamp is made of stainless steel. It's about 13 inches long. The business end is about two and a half inches long and a half inch wide, and there are rows of sharp teeth. This is a grasping instrument. When it gets a hold of something, it does not let go. The abortionist uses this clamp to grasp an arm or leg. Once he has a firm grip, the abortionist pulls hard in order to tear the limb from the baby's body. One by one, the rest of the limbs are removed, along with the intestines, the spine, and the heart and lungs. Usually the most difficult part of the procedure is extracting the baby's head, which is about the size of a large plum at 20 weeks. The head is grasped and crushed. The abortionist knows he has crushed the skull when a white substance comes out of the cervix. This was the baby's brains. Mm. The abortionist then removes skull pieces. He removes the placenta and any leftover parts of the baby with a curette, scraping the lining of the uterus for any remaining tissue. The abortionist then collects the baby parts and reassembles them to make sure that there are two arms, two legs, and all the pieces. Once all the parts have been accounted for, the abortion is complete. 
For the woman, this procedure carries a significant risk of major complications, including perforation or laceration of the uterus or cervix with possible damage to the bowel, bladder, and other maternal organs. Infection and hemorrhage can also occur, which can even lead to death. Future pregnancies are also at greater risk for loss or premature delivery due to abortion related because the baby is so large and developed. And that's that's the other procedure when they do it on um, mm, perforation, uh, laceration. So again, yeah. I, I think that we keep talking about I'm pro-choice and I'm pro-life and this is my body. Well, it's not your body. It's the baby's body. And what happens during an abortion is that they tear that baby from limb to limb. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think like the fact that you actually brought, brought this up was poignant. It's like really poignant. I don't think anyone's bringing this stuff up. Um, you don't, you, you don't get that in prenatal classes, right? Um, it, <laughs> <laughs> Well, the thing is, you know, I try to when I do these shows and I don't do my shows as much as I want to, but I try to um, add value. Mm -hmm. And when I started researching, I learned so much and I, you know, I, I knew this, but I was very I was sure that a lot of people didn't know what happens during abortion. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm pretty sure because of what happens, um, you cannot tell me right now with what you see that that's not murder. All right, I'll come back to that. Um, you can. Yeah, but initially, I think the responsibility lies with us. So it's like, you know, there's no sort of education around this sort of thing, really. Um, and I think that's a problem. Like, we, we, there's no, like, our children go to school um, and we can, we can try and be the best parents. I think there's a couple of people that sort of spoke on it before, but it's just like, we can be the best parents that we can, but realistically there's 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 it's really nothing so you know if our um go to place is google like, you know in terms of real life that's a problem um because you know unless what 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 happens is unless you've actually experienced it you you know that message can't be passed on because it's like you're you're now becoming an entity that you're sort of passing things on and acting like the government should be acting um, mm -hmm. and passing that message on to the whole community. You can't do that. Like the message ain't gonna be apart from yourselves. You get what I'm saying? So when we got platforms and stuff, that's why I really appreciate what you did today because it was like, uh, I ain't seen that anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a real thing. It's a real, real thing in terms of um, the effect it has on, um, you know, not only women, but the, the men that they interact with because yeah. the women have the first point education because they're feeling it like, you know, it's your body. Um, you know what you're going through. You're going through the doctor's appointments and whatnot. And you're trying to explain this to the man that you're with. And how's the man supposed to actually understand what the hell that is? Unless you, you know, it's like you're pulling up a video. If you're yeah. with a guy, is that something you will do? Like you're not you're not about to just sit down and go look. This is what I'm going through. Uh, I'm going to pull up this video to make you understand. <laughs> like, that's not going to happen, <laughs> like because you're going through certain things. Um, mm -hmm. But it's so important um, because um, to to lead to lead on from that, it sticks with you. It does. It sticks with you, and 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 it becomes part of you. Um, mm -hmm. to make to make a human being is not an easy thing um and it's a it's a miracle as a as a matter of fact we've actually forgotten that mm -hmm. it's an actual miracle because there's so many so many circumstances where you know women give birth to children and they don't um the children themselves may not be what they foresee or foresaw or whatever but it's just you know, you hear all these stories about over here anyway, like you hear stories about children, uh, women giving birth and they'll leave their children in like a dumpster or something because the, 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 the whole um, process was just so traumatic mm -hmm. um, that they, they didn't know how to do it or, or cooperate and sort of they didn't have the support or whatnot. Um, so 
I, I, I feel very passionate about the subject matter that you brought up because yeah. um, it's, it's, it's needed. Um, and, um, you know, I hope there's many, you know, I hope that potentially we can start talking about these sort of subject matters a bit more because it, it's, um, it's needed. Um, yeah. mm, I, I agree with you, um, Simon. I think it's needed. <clears throat> I, I think we need to talk about this more, especially with this turning. What does that look like for the black community? You know, if we're if we're wanting to be better, then we have to think about other options and safe places of protecting our kids that are our future kids. Like we've lost 20 million. So yeah. I want to refocus on rebuilding, and that's meaning replenishing who we are and again it does start with mom and dad and it starts with mom and daddy making some babies i mean like to, to speak on that is like so like there was there was, there was a couple of people that came up and they went like i've had about three four abortions like that <laughs> just, i mean to live like that not disenfranchising anybody but i'm just saying like that's quite traumatic it is very traumatic. So think about the mentality that that woman has, the what she goes through. And I'm sorry, you know, we don't speak about this, but I do not think for one minute that the three, four, five, whatever abortions a woman had, that they don't think about that one, two, three, four abortions every other day. Exactly. I mean, because, like... Because it's always the shoulda, woulda, couldas. Listen, my ex-wife, had an abortion mm. so and she'll speak about that to me every day like although I wasn't part of that process so it it sort of made me sort of understand yeah how poignant that is is like you can't get away from it so like if you are choosing to go into a new relationship and you've gone through an abortion that sticks so you have to sort of think about your part, your, like your your potential partner yeah. in, in terms of how that's going to affect them. Because for me, I was like, I, I don't know what what that felt like until like it sort of, you know, I, I sort of dealt with it in the future with, with her. Mm -hmm. But it does have a drastic effect, obviously, to a point where you're going to be speaking about it for the rest of your life. Yeah. So you really need to take that into, into consideration when you're laying down with somebody. Um, Take precaution, please. Um, you know, do what you need to do. Like, don't just be out here um, trying to have children and babies um, when when there's no sort of backbone to um, what relationship you're in. Yeah. Because that's that's vitally important. You need you need some sort of structure yeah. or, or something. I don't know. Um, I hear you. I'm gonna get somebody else here, Simon. I got. I I he said he's disappointed, so I got to figure out why he's disappointed in me. <laughs> All right. Peace, Courtney. Thank you All very right. much. It's always good to talk to you. Love and blessings. All right. You as well. All right. Peace. Hello, Gregory. How are you this evening? I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, uh, I'm feeling pretty good. I, I, I may have come in and just called up the partial discussion between you and the, the previous guests, the okay. one before the last one. It's uh Clarence Thomas, you're a fan of? Um, I don't I wouldn't say necessarily a fan. Uh I'm not a fan of anyone. I'm more of a policy um voter. So oh. I look at people's policy, not necessarily them. And so whether race I doesn't play a factor when it comes to my politics. Agreed. Uh, mm -hmm. You're aware of his wife's involvement in January 6th insurrection. The insurrection? Yes. You, you've heard about her involvement in that insurrection, correct? I, I don't know her involvement in insurrection. Okay. You might want to look at that. I will. Okay. Check that out. Is that out. why you mad at me? Because you thought I'm I was up here talking about Clarence Thomas and my you. homeboy? I'm a fan of you. I watch, <laughs> watch you guys on the peep all the time. And uh, I'm a pretty big fan of yours on, on that oh, panel. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, but, uh, and and on, on the abortion thing, how do you feel about that? Well, this is what my stream is about. Um, okay. I don't know if you just saw the last video that I 
just played, but it was on one of the, the procedure of what the abortion is and what happens. So um, I make it very, very clear that I'm pro-life. Okay. Um, very, very clear. I said there's three reasons why I am. It's my religion, it's biology, um, and it's also the procedure that takes place. The before and, well, the during and the after effects of the procedure. And it's those three reasons is why I'm pro-life. You do understand that there's a strong possibility there'll be a lot of children that are going to need to be taken care of. So that's what they say. Um, and again, with my stream, let me pull up some stats here because it's always the should, it could, it would. Right. So among women who seek an abortion but were denied, more than 90% choose to keep and raise their children rather than place them up for adoption. So I think it's the, the I think part and it could or the should or the woods. But, yeah, the ones that are but factually, children, it's not, that's not true. The ones that are denied abortions usually end up keeping over 90% keep their children and they don't put them up for adoption. Okay, so... That means there are going to be more children that are going to need our assistance. You think? Well, maybe, maybe not. We don't know. Majority of the people that have had, let me bring my stats up because you <laughs> missed my whole thing. Okay. Uh, so again, a uh, majority of people who have had abortions already are parents. Okay. So they're already, usually these parents have been stable. Um, they already have kids. Um, we don't know particularly why. A lot of it is convenience. A lot of it could be, and it might be some domestic violence that happens as well. Now people, the babies, you can't go running. I mean, it is a lot of factors, but we don't know, but we have to, there's not one factor that can justify murder. Well, now, now. I don't know. Well, that's where your religion and how you feel about abortion comes in. Did you, you didn't see my video? No, I haven't. But Let me show I, I, you this. I've, I've, this I've is, heard these arguments before, but. Uh, but it's not, the thing is, I guess they're not arguments. It's biology. Okay. How about uh, you, when, when people, when we, we already complain about taxes. Mm -hmm. We already complain, complain about that. I'm willing to bet that when, this thing happens and people are forced to have these children and can't afford to take care of them. And when the states come calling for assistance and raising taxes to take care of these children, you will hear a whole lot of hollering about that. So, I mean, I don't, I can't deal with assumptions. I can tell you what happened before Roe versus Wade which was not the case uh, before Roe versus Wade, black people was uh, not necessarily striving back in the sixties. We, people, we had in the sixties and it wasn't. So maybe it was a different time, but I mean, before we Roe, we, we had a community. Culture back then. Well, before Roe versus Wade, we had a community. And even with this, our community is where we are now because we lack responsibility and accountability. Absolutely. So there can't be change in our community unless we keep, if, if we take government out and we start taking accountability for what we are and what we're doing. So I actually see this as a plus. You can't take the easy way out no more. The government uh, gave us so much. You can't. So if you take the government out, who suffers? with a bad parent that decided to have a child or had to have a child. Well, no one is forcing anyone to have a child. This I'm saying, I'm saying when they well, do this, is, this well, if this they can't have an abortion, they're going to have a kid. People going to have sex. Good. They're not going to murder. So we got to murder. Call you mean by I'm murder, you may have an abortion. Correct. You said we call it abortion because we think it's so cute. No. Because we don't know what it is. Let me play this for you. Okay. 13 weeks of pregnancy. After administering anesthesia. Now, let me, I'm playing this, and this is what happens in the first trimester. This is between the 5 and 13 week. 
people don't know they're pregnant to the fifth to the sixth week. Now I'm the father of a daughter that's having an abortion. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm a, very I'm familiar. A, I'm a, okay. Well, I'm a mother, so I've, okay. I'm familiar with the process of of it as well. Okay. So you then you should know that this is the first term. This is when we find out that we're pregnant. Okay. And it's usually about five to six weeks. Then we find out that we're pregnant because in ultrasound, when they hear a heartbeat, then they know that we're pregnant. Heartbeat starts at five to six weeks. So you tell me this ain't a baby. Abortionist uses a speculum like this. This is placed inside the vagina and opened using this screw on the side, allowing the abortionist to see the cervix, the entrance to the uterus. The cervix acts as a gate that stays closed for the duration of pregnancy, protecting the baby until it is ready for birth. The abortionist uses a series of metal rods called dilators, like these, which increase in thickness and inserts them into the cervix to dilate it, gaining access to the inside of the uterus where the baby resides. If the baby has a heartbeat, fingers, toes, arms, and legs, but its bones are still weak and fragile. The abortionist takes a suction catheter like this one. This is a 14 French suction catheter. It's clear plastic, about nine inches long, and it has a hole through the center. It is inserted through the cervix into the uterus. The suction machine is then turned on with a force 10 to 20 times more powerful than your household vacuum cleaner. The baby is rapidly torn apart by the force of the suction and squeezed through this tubing down into the suction machine, followed by the placenta. Though the uterus is mostly emptied at this point, one of the risks of a suction DNC is incomplete abortion. Essentially, pieces of the baby or placenta left behind. This can lead to infection or bleeding. In an attempt to prevent this, the abortionist uses a curette to scrape a lining of the uterus. The curette is basically a long-handled curved blade. Once the uterus is empty, the speculum is removed and the abortion is complete. The risks of suction DNC include perforation or laceration of the uterus or cervix, potentially damaging intestine, bladder, and nearby blood vessels, hemorrhage, infection, and in rare instances, even death. Okay. That's a baby. Okay. I'll, I'm going to go along with you on that, but still. But how could you not? The baby feels? This, this one. Okay, I, I get you on that. But still, let's say in the event somebody's raped, they go to turn with that baby. They have to live with that baby and that ordeal. That's okay. Are there Are any have, exceptions to you? No, there's no exceptions. Okay. And this is the reason why I can bring something else too, because I mean, I've, again, during my research for the show and actually listening to women that were raped and decided to keep their child. And then the ones that didn't, the ones that didn't said that it was a double thing because aborting the baby does not take away the fact that they were raped. They will double always double. remember it. They will always have trauma. And now they're having trauma due to an abortion. So now it's two traumas these women are having to go through, a rape and killing their child. Would there not be two traumas going through the rape and looking at that child every day, being reminded where that child came from for the rest of their life? For the women that has had raped and kept their child, they said no. They said it was power and strength because they wanted to love to prevail over the evil act. And they could not see themselves killing a part of them because someone decided to act a fool and harm them. But we do understand there are exceptions to those those studies, correct? Well, you do understand Every, that, all that but, but this is the thing as well, too, because what we like to do when we try to defend an argument is we do we always go to the minority. That's that's less less than two percent of um, abortions happen amongst incest and rape victims, less than two. And I also feel that. Well, let's go back to that. It's less than two. So you mean I, to I tell me you. that we need to start focusing on the less than 2% and forget about the 98% that have these abortions because they don't feel like it, or they don't want the responsibility, or they scared that they may and might find out they was cheating? Not so much that, but... Uh, how about abnormal births or births mm -hmm. that you could die? You've been diagnosed and possibly that you will die. Okay. More, increased, more increased chance of death. So let's talk about that. So the first 
what was the first before you talked about increase of death? What was the uh, one that you have a birth that is dangerous? Okay, a birth a, a birth defect. So to, to endure. Okay, well, so where you have you, to choose, where you, it's pretty certain that say a doctor comes to you and tell you you're having this baby, you're probably going to die having this baby. Okay, so let's talk about that because usually if they if it's a miscarriage or a procedure that they have, if something was going to happen where the mother um, was at risk for their life, usually what doctors do, they will tell you about the procedure and what needs to happen. What will not happen is an abortion where they tear the baby from limb to limb. So you, so it's that does not. You're happen. more concerned about how the baby is. The abortion procedure is done where the baby doesn't go through being torn apart. Well, no, I'm, I'm, well, I'm more concerned about life. Now, if it so happens, and again, this is very minute. Again, you're talking about something that does it. Doctors don't even call it abortions. If you have an epitom, epi, epitomic pregnancy where the, the eggs outside the uterus, what, that's not an abortion. What I'm saying, if you have, have miscarriages all the time, but that's not abortion. The the abortion is literally the act of terminating a pregnancy with, with nothing, nothing wrong with the baby. It's not about to kill the parent. That's not, that's what the abortion is. So if it's something medical, then that's between the doctor and then they go through that. That's why doctors don't even perform um, abortions anymore. It's just the total act of it. It's disgusting. It has no regard, no respect for life. And it's all, the main objective in abortion is murder. The main objective, if a woman is having a, a issue with the pregnancy, the main objective is not murder. The main objective is how can I treat these patients so they both live? What are the options that we have so we can both have life? And if it's one or the other, then they usually go to, look, I can save you or I can save the baby. They have options. In abortion, the baby don't have an option. But who would you choose? I mean, you're going to choose to lose your partner to have a baby? That's on you and your partner. And that's okay to have the baby taken in that instance, whatever you call it. It's, it's, still, it's, terminating, it's still terminating the pregnancy, correct? Well, not necessarily. If the, it depends on the procedure, so we're talking in general, and I don't know what has happened. I don't. I'm not a doctor. I'm not sure what happens with these pregnancies where it might be the mom or it might be the daddy. I have not a clue, but I know that's not an abortion. I know people miscarry, and that's not an abortion. If something is physically wrong with you and you want to carry the baby to term and you physically cannot, that's not an abortion. Abortion is I'm going to murder my baby because I don't want to deal with the baby. But either way, you're taking a baby. No, uh, so you. You see what I'm saying? No, I'm you're, saying trying to, you're trying to correlate it and it's not in correlation. You can't do that. OK. And I know. And I. I know of a couple occasions where the mother passed away to have her baby. So did she commit suicide? Uh, but from what your terms and what you're saying, then she would have just she committed suicide because she knew she was gonna die. So she, I mean, no, I'm not gonna go there. I'm saying if I was that was my wife, I might have chosen if I had the choice to keep my wife alive and not have the baby. Would that be murder? It's not, mur it's okay, not murder. Okay, maybe not. Than you, that you have to, okay, we we have to play with. We have to understand definitions and stuff, right? So, what is your definition of abortion? Anytime a baby's taken and 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 it's uh, doesn't is not living outside the womb when you when you have abortion? to take the baby whatever the reason is and the baby is is deceased it causes the baby to die that's a that's a that's an abortion to me say that again either way me. if anytime you take a baby from the womb whatever stage it's in 
and it doesn't survive, you're, you're having it removed and knowing that it's, it's, you're doing away with the pregnancy is what I'm saying. You're doing away with a pregnancy to save your spouse. And you know when you do away with that pregnancy, the baby's not going to survive. If you, you go through the pregnancy, your spouse doesn't survive. Well, Either way, if you do, if you can call it an abortion, the baby's die. The die. Okay, so if you take the, it away, the baby dies. Okay, What's you're want, you're wanting to talk about something that doctors don't even call abortion. That's why they don't even have stats on if the, if it's the mother lives or the the baby lives. There's not even stats when you look at abortion that because that's not what an abortion is. But it's the same. So sometimes outcome, babies correct? don't. Same well, outcome. no, it's not the same outcome. If I have a miscarriage and I give birth to a stillborn. If you force a miscarriage to survive and the baby dies, it's, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dead baby no, either way. Okay. When you have a, a miscarriage, it's something I cannot control. No, I'm saying a, a miscarriage or a forced labor to a baby that's not going to survive it's not in the stage to survive so that your spouse survives the baby die it's going to die when they remove it so that your spouse survives you still have a a death whether you have called it abortion or you're okay. choosing i think you're you're playing on your plan with semantics that i'm not trying to but here but, but here's to. the thing which which i'm trying to trying to get through i guess okay the stats of someone having a having an abortion because it's either their life or theirs it's not considered abortion so you're not going to see stats on that i understand those are health things that your doctor and you go through and if it's where is my life might pat and this is what black women deal with a lot because we lose lives um having babies this is something that black women go through all the time true however that's not what an abortion is but same outcome well it's going to be a same outcome if i have a miscarriage and i deliver a stillborn a baby might die that's not a choice to have an a, a okay so look here here's the thing okay this is what if i have to go to an abortion clinic to get the procedure done that's an abortion just because what you're talking about what you're talking about happens with their physician and happens with the OBGYN. They do not administer abortions. So therefore that wouldn't be considered abortion. Abortion is me willfully going to a place to murder my child. That's what it is. It's the willfulness of it. I'm going to get rid of my baby. Okay, let me when make something this. happens and I'm sick, I'm not willfully going to my doctor. My doctor is telling you something is going wrong with your pregnancy. I know this is going to hurt you and your family, but it looks like if you carry through, you might not live. That is completely different. No. That, um, no. Okay. Hi, Nathan. I mean, I don't understand what why well, we're it's point. completely different. Okay, I'm just saying if if it's a choice between a mother surviving and a baby surviving. Well, let me ask you. And they you say this. if you have this birth, your wife is going to die. Let if me, we take the baby, your your wife is going to live. Let you me have ask to you. Make like, a choice. Okay, Gregory. By that logic, by that logic, if a mother that had one kidney and her daughter needed a kidney transplant, and the doctor said, "Hey, your kidney lines up with your daughter. I need your kidney for her to survive." If you don't get my kidney, then she's if she doesn't get your kidney, she's going to die. But uh, if you give it to her, you going to die. If I don't if if I don't give my daughter my kidney, is that murder? That's different. No, it is not. How? Well, it's not murder. It's not murder not to do that. But you actually have a living child that you're talking about in your home that's sick that you can say back giving your kidney that's different you have a how, baby how is family. that different because i have a living child in my stomach the only difference honey is location one just happens to be outside my stomach but one happens to be in the only difference is location but 
uh, uh, I don't think it's the same. Why not? Because when, if you got a living child in your home, that's a little, you have a whole different connection. Whole different connection. You've been you've been raising a kid. You haven't. Yeah, you have, you feel this baby inside of you. But there's I, I just can't understand. I cannot believe that you have. You can't connection. understand it because you're not a woman. I when my daughter was with me, I had a connection. Hearing her, I can't speak on that. Right. No, it's a connection. Right. I you're I spoke right. to her, and when I tell you, when I get to sleep, when she gets tired, I I, to, I sing the exact same songs I did when she was in my stomach, and she goes to sleep like that. I can't argue with you on it. You're a woman, and you've been through it. I will not argue with that. Can I ask a question? Shout out. Hey, what's up, Courtney? Hey, Nathan. How do, I'm going to bring JoJo up here, too. All right. JoJo. Greg, how you doing, Gregory? How you doing? How you doing, man? Respect your uh, what you're doing on YouTube, too. I I, I like it a lot. <laughs> Sir, thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm trying to recover from that long stream I did. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I, um, I want to I want to try to understand your um your position. And I think this is such a good conversation because everybody has such a very wide uh, view of the topic. Um, and so I'm going to I want to ask you some things out of respect, because I do want to get a better understanding of your per, your perspective of the issue. Sure. I'm learning, too. All right. Sounds good. Same here. Uh, I learned a lot the, during the stream. So um, what is your I think one of the questions that hasn't been asked is what is your actual perspective on abortions? um just in general do you do you um, i'm yeah. not i'm not a full abortion okay but i am a choice person especially uh if there uh, are uh, situations okay all for it got it and i and i think that's fair i think a lot of people are arguing that there are certain circumstances that they want the government to consider some states are not considering anything they're like they're not allowing you to do it period in my state here in Georgia, they are allowing, uh, they, there's this thing called the heartbeat bill. I don't know if you heard about it, but uh, they did a significant amount of research and they, they are saying that after six weeks, during six weeks, uh, uh, a fetus has a heartbeat. And at that point in time, they are saying that that's when the fetus is alive. And therefore, if you actually abort that uh, baby, aborting is killing, um, you will be taking, ending the life of that human being that's inside that woman's body and they are looking at that as as murder. That's a form of homicide. Um, the problem is, I think what the argument is, people are trying to figure out when is the baby alive? A heartbeat, right? So this is what they're saying in Georgia. They're also saying that they're going to take in consideration cases involving rape and incest. And then, of course, medical concerns. I think that's very I think that's very fair. I think. The, but, so but, but Gregory, I think with your statements earlier you were uh you were conflating a lot of different things you were talking about a multitude of different things and then putting it all together in like a mosh posh and therefore it was sounding very uh it was sounding it, it i was listening i was like what is he talking about what is he where is he going so i couldn't you good brother i just couldn't figure out where you're going i said man let me let me get up here and have a conversation with this brother. i'm just trying to uh uh you're yeah. arguing the emotional piece to it and, and 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 there's nothing wrong with that. There is an emotional side to this thing because we want we want to consider things that we have no control over, like rape, incest, and things of that nature. Exactly. You are arguing the fairness behind it. And what I'm saying that uh, the majority of people are saying a life is a life. A life is a life. There are people who don't agree on on going to war because you have to take a life that you should not have to take. So so when you value life, you look at things totally different. Um, the idea at the end of the day is that this is not going to stop everything, but it'll it'll it will definitely reduce it. You made um, you made a statement earlier. Um, you said your daughter was getting an abortion. Is that correct? No, this was a long time ago. A long time ago. Did, if you don't mind me asking, did she express the reasons why? I'd rather not go into that. Respect, mm -hmm. respect. Um, I think one of the interesting things about the topic is there's a multitude of, of reasons that a person will find uh, justifications for doing it. And I, I do understand that process. I think the reality is, though, at the end of the day, um, it is a life. So let me ask let me ask you this. Do you believe a man should have a say so in whether or not a woman is going to abort his child in her stomach? Uh, 
That's hard. I would, I would, if it was me, I would, I would like to have some say, but at the end of the day, it's, it's the woman's body. But is that is, but I'm asking you though, you just said you would like to have some say. It is her body, but that's not her child. That child, does that child, does that child not it belong is. to you as well? Yes. So why would, why should you not have a say so in, in said child's life? Uh, what if your parent? What if your parents decided? That's a little bit more personal. I understand. To deal with if I need that call, I wouldn't want to be the the ultimate person to make that call, or to be able to stop that. Um, the, my best my best option would to be to make sure that I don't get myself in that position as a man. I I can respect that. I can respect that. I, I I'm not going to take that away from a woman. Wait I'm, one second, I'm, Gregory. You, you just Greg don't get in that position. Well, I like the way you said that, right? Because guess what? You're talking about accountability. So you are saying in this moment that you don't want to put yourself in a position where you give a woman 100% control over dictating whether or not she can kill your child. Yet you will not give that woman the same, same level of accountability to not get a child, get herself pregnant in the first place to where she would have to put herself in a situation to abort the baby. Why are you not giving her the same level of responsibility that you are giving yourself? Because I look at the people out here in today's world and there's a lot of irresponsibility. Is that a reason or is that an excuse? Because those are two totally that's, different things. That's what's going on out here. These people are, are they're having at it. They don't they don't think about the what's they think about the moment and they're not thinking about the consequence. Whose fault is that? That's personal. That's but that's their own fault. It's but see the problem is that it impacts this country. It impacts our community. So so again, earlier earlier you made a statement and you were you were talking about how the government has to fit the bill, foot the bill on this issue, right? Yeah, this is true. So one would argue instead of investing right in the homicide, how about we invest on the education of prevention? Right. And I think that's the conversation I don't hear. People I only want to talk about, right? Like we need to make the same amount of effort preventing it than we are talking about committing the homicide of it. Because there needs to be consequences. I don't trust this government to do right either side. But we trust them enough to cut us a check if we can't take care Ooh, of our children. They do that. Then, then, yeah. Then that's right. not a good thing. But there, there goes the problem. We trust them enough to incentivize us to do immoral acts against our own communities, right? But we don't trust them enough to make a decision and say that we should not be killing the baby themselves. We, we, all we're going to do is keep, if, if we we don't feel good about them cutting a check to incentivize this, why would I trust them to all of a sudden do the right thing now? They, they cut that check, they get, they get the man out the life, and, and it's just a big cycle. It is the big side. So then the question is, the question is and how big, much, how much of the, how much of the onus is on us to fix our own problem? It's a person. It, absolutely. You feel me? Absolutely. Um, it but it's going to happen. But, and, and everybody should take responsibility, but you know, I right. love them, but people, people <laughs> are not responsible out here, man. Well, but that's, but that's the whole point. The point is that's not an excuse. It's not an excuse, but it's what's happening. Well, then my thing is, my thing though is, ex by saying that we're accepting that. The question is, how do we fix it? Be responsible. You said what? We, how do we make people be responsible? We have to. We all have the to... birth control in the world out here. We shouldn't even be in this position. Yeah. It, it's cheap. They give it away some places. Let me hold on. Hold that thought. Go ahead, Corey. Hold that thought. Let me get Joe in here. Joe, Joe in here, because I know he has some stuff to say, um, and I want to get what you have to say about my stream you've been here jojo yeah peace what's going on Quentin? yeah long time no here how are you girl you know i, I try to hit you on the cash up every now and then talk to you, <laughs> you know I, I don't normally be you know what i'm saying on the youtube thing i had to cut some folks off man because they just been off cold man they've been off cold hey <laughs> you know about uh the black authority right jason black Jason Black, the, the, yeah, yeah, he'll part of the new black media man. He got a saying, and it say we gotta watch out for them old niggas. <laughs> and I don't mean to goddamn say that in shade, but I mean to say that in truth, right? 
because we got a brother sitting up here, man, advocating for the same thing that was helping our demise. Roe versus Wade was built on racial injustice and lies. The lady actually admitted on TV that she made that off of a lie. She was not gang raped by black men. That's true. And all of the momentum, all of the money schemes that she 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 got behind it, all of the promotion and all of that stuff, she she actually confessed that on TV. But we still got people like this brother who dropped the ball when they were passing it right. See, now you want to talk about us being irresponsible, right? This generation being irresponsible, but they didn't gatekeep back then in the 70s when they passed it because he is a part of the generation that let it get passed. So you can't blame us. We're picking up the we're picking up where these guys left off. These are the skeletons in their closet that we gotta face. These are the demons that the, the generation before us put in our in our way. So this is the path we gotta walk. It's a good thing that they took that back. It's a good thing that they're stopping this type of stuff from going on because it puts the responsibility back into our households. Somebody's mm -hmm. going to learn how to be responsible. I guarantee you that. Somebody's <laughs> going to learn to keep their legs closed. Maybe not all of them, but I guarantee you it will start affecting all uh, our people in a, in a better way because guess what? All of this hot girl summer, giving easy access to sex, not having no repercussions behind what we do, killing ourselves off. See, we would we should have been a bigger number. Mm -hmm. Our population was supposed to be much bigger. 20 million people have 20 million babies mm -hmm. that could have been people, right? Uh, uh have been aborted black babies since the Roe versus Wade went into place. That's right. So we got a system of injustice that's oppressing us and has us in this same situation, and then we're advocating for the same laws that hurt us. The same politicians that are against us, we will get out there and 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 uh, twerk and dance and sing and eat catfish nuggets and all this old good stuff just for us to hear a, 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 a few lies to make us feel like we're important. You feel what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, this ain't addressing black issues, man. When it comes to abortion. You know what I mean? That's not address. We need to have our numbers. We need to get our numbers up so we can all build as a collective. That's how you address that that situation right there, man. And definitely, we need those reparations, man. They need to cut the check. We in the way, Quentin. I'm finna get that and leave the floor. <laughs> Everybody wants a check. Much love, much love, man. Keep doing what you're doing, so you know what I'm saying. And um, do you got you got a Twitter, Quentin? Cause I was trying, I was looking for you on Twitter, man. I don't really be on Twitter like that. I have an account. I just don't really do it. But oh, okay, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you, Joe. I actually, I actually. Uh, shared your video and got some people, you know what I'm saying, from Twitter to come check you out because, you know what I'm saying, like, yeah, folks don't know you on cold, Quentin. You know what I'm saying? I just, you know, I'm, I speak <laughs> honestly, I mean, I obviously I care about the community and yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Top, no doubt. Topic so do I. It's so hard staying on cold <laughs> these days. <laughs> yeah, All right. No so, doubt, no I doubt. appreciate you, JoJo. Thank peace, you. I'll peace send it love. to you. All right, okay. all right, now make well, sure right. now. Be well said, sure. Jojo. Well said. <laughs> all right, man, Nate. Uh -huh. Peace. Uh -huh. All right, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> all right, now. Shout out to Jojo. Bless his heart. We got. We definitely Gregory, got to have a conversation. Greg, what did you have to say about that? Me? Yes, he was addressing you, uh, and he uh, said it was your generation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That started this. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I have you. nothing to say about that. Hey, just because so folks out there don't mean you have to jump on board. That's true. You got to be responsible enough to look at it and decide whether that's right for you or not. Whether you believe in it or not, just like you did, uh, Courtney. How long has abortion been legal? How long has it been legal? And how long have you been against it? Um, so I, well, I said the story that I began to be pro-life maybe about a year and a half ago. So it's very recent. Oh. And the reason being is that I was going to, um, I was pro-choice. I wasn't for it, but same right. you, I was lukewarm. And so I was straddling the fence, like, you know, and eh, I don't believe it, but if she does it, that's on her. Um, but then I was going to my daughter's, um, pediatrician. And it's in a black neighborhood. 
um, North Nashville, and it's right next door to uh, a Planned Parenthood, right next door. And I was like, okay, you know, so they're picketing and I'm walking out with my daughter and they're looking at me not knowing where I'm going. Um, so I I don't remember if I went up to him or he went up to me, but it was a pastor and was like, well, this is why we pick it. And I was so glad to see that you have a daughter and, you know, it would be so great if you can come over here so they can see that you're doing it. And then they started showing me videos. They were a little bit more graphic than what I showed today. Um, and I was just blown away. Because I, for the life of me, I'm thinking of abortion. I'm just thinking it's the baby's gone. But the process, I never knew that they tore the limbs. And I never knew that at six weeks, a baby can feel. So they take the humanity. They take um, the spirit out of a child as if it's nothing. And it's just there. Like it's just some blob and it's not it's six weeks it, the heart is beating and I guess I didn't even recognize having a daughter like I knew it was a heartbeat around six seven weeks but you know when you look at a sonogram it wasn't 3d you know it was just I saw the little head but then seeing the 3d things and seeing that these are babies and they move and they have fingers and they can think and they can blink at six, at eight weeks that's not taught to us. So it brought it back to it's just being a human. And it's just the only thing is just the living baby is just not outside in the world yet. And even when the baby is born, still needs me completely. So you went from pro-choice to no exceptions. Absolutely. Okay. I'm just asking. I mean, I went from understanding that it's murder. Okay. So I'm not, star you know, I'm not over here hurting the people that's pro-choice and you had no eyes slap your silly girl no. like i ain't like that <laughs> no but no. but okay. i i just started looking at it as i i do believe that it's murder and i just can't sit here especially with a daughter because then i think well what if i would have not had her i wonder what these politicians will do one day if one of their kids gets preg impregnated by undesirable they're gonna go and abort the baby you doggone right and but that's not but but and i think that's supposed to do it and they'll do it of course but welcome to america right that's okay. not the, that's and that's not the, and i think people like to try to make that argument but that's not the point i'm not yeah. making the argument not you not you not you but I've, I've heard people say that hey well the rich people are going to do it anyways or people who pretend like they're against it when they're put in a situation, they're gonna do it too. Yeah. And you know, some will, some will, and some won't. But again, I think it, it's a way to deflect from the argument of we're, we're talking about that you're killing a life that can't protect itself, that did not did not have an opportunity to speak for himself and or herself, the baby. So, so this is something I think is interesting though, because you made me think about this when you were talking about uh, a woman should have a hundred percent say so over it's her response it's her right to abort the child you know the power of a woman that she has is she can make a man become a father even if he doesn't want to be sure but can. a man cannot make a woman a mother if she doesn't want to be and so if if a woman decides she wants to abort the baby and, and kill the baby essentially then nothing happens to her right she's allowed to do it what do you think about a man who doesn't want to be a father and the woman is making him be a father and he decides to put something in her drink. He crushes up some pills and has her ingested without her knowledge and it kills the baby. Do you think that man should be charged with uh, feticide? I don't know so much about the feticide, but I, I, it should be a charge for, for doing the, that act, period. But see, whatever it is you put in a drink, it should be a charge for uh and killing and yeah i don't know about going straight to feticide but the act of putting something in someone's drink to, to cause baby. any problem with them should be it should be against the law well and i think this is where the problem comes in i think the reality is that men don't have a say so and it's the man's child too so so this argument gets so dicey because we're not giving men any power and authority to make any decision. Well, Nate, so, mm -hmm. 
our power is before the act. Okay. You got a man, you already know this stuff. True. You know what's going on out here. It's True. Been on for years. When I was in high school back in the, the 70s, I was so scared of that happening to me. I made sure I handled my business. And there lies the problem. Well, I did not want to be anybody's daddy at 60, 15, 16 years old. But you said it right there, Mr. Johnson. You said it right there. There was a fear there. There, I, there was a stigma there. Today yeah. and today in our generation, my generation, Courtney's, they have taken out the fear. They've taken out the stigma out of it. They've taken the shame out of it. Absolutely. And that, that plays a big part in it. People, people are not afraid. Men are not afraid. They're out here throwing their seat around every single day. And, and there's, no, there's no shame and no embarrassment about it. Um, you know, and so again, I think one of the biggest problems we have though, we, we have to be able to talk about men's rights in regarding this. You have men who want to be fathers and they're being denied. So, you know, or a woman, they may, she may have agreed and then changed her mind How, again. So these things, you know, these it's, it's not, it's not equitable. And that's an issue because okay. here's the, here's the problem. If I'm in a domestic violence situation with a woman or say I'm driving. And say I get into a car accident and a lady is on the and I get in a car accident with a woman who's driving and she's pregnant and she loses the baby because of that car accident. I'm getting charged with two deaths. If she dies, the baby dies. I'm getting charged twice. You get what I'm saying? So so again, it's this notion that it's not a human in her stomach only when it's convenient to the woman. Right. The law acknowledges that that baby is a person. Well, you know, mm -hmm. ask this. So if she's pregnant, mm -hmm. she's saying she doesn't want the baby, and I should be to tell her to have it anyway. Would that would that be my right? I believe I believe it should be your. I believe honestly, um, just and That's I've been thinking right. a lot about this. I think that it should be a court. I think you should have to go to court. I think that a woman should get written consent to abort. I believe if they're going to allow it under context. A man is also responsible for ownership of that child. I believe a woman should have to get consent through a court in states that make it legal. I think it's I think it's only fair and equitable that a man has a say so. If wow. you and here's another thing: if you don't if you don't get permission for the man and the man doesn't sign off on it, say I don't want to be a father. What would this look like if I don't want to be a father, but you make me a father anyways? What would it look like now if? I decide to remove all financial responsibility because I didn't want to be a father. Should a man have that right? If she has a right to make you a father without your permission, should you have a right to also remove yourself from financial liability? I would look at that <laughs> like if I had a son, uh -huh. I tell him, do not get in that position, son. Well, tell women the same thing. That's the problem. We're not, we're not preaching the same message across the board. But... Uh, Why are we holding men more accountable than we're willing to hold women? We're not uh, any more special. We're equal humans. That day when a man can make a woman have his baby uh, will not be in my lifetime. <laughs> Wait a minute, <laughs> say, <laughs> when he can I, I tell just, her when she wants to have an abortion and that dude can say, no, nah, mm -hmm. baby. I well, want to say that day. Uh, that, that day will not it's true. This is true. But one would argue the same people said the same thing. The birth of it, but you know, talking about, okay, say I want the baby. Well, a lot of people didn't think 1865 was going to be a thing either. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Okay. So we, we, we are here today trying to reimagine what this country looks like. Yeah. If we're not talking about men's rights, we are not having a equitable conversation. Men do not have any rights. That's a well, fact. But you will charge me for that the, the death of that baby that you say is not a human being. So why am I getting charged? Why is anybody getting charged for it? So, you know, we, we got it. We got to hit a reset. Men need to step up and start speaking. We can't just say, oh, let women decide, blase, blase, because when they take your ass to court and they drain your pockets, right? So, so we need to bring some balance. I think this is the perfect time for us as men to stand up and start saying, this is what we demand. If you want, if you live in a state that makes it legal, you need to get a man's permission. Some people, you can't even divorce that easy these days without getting, you got to have a mute. There's a lot you got to do. We're talking about a whole life. That's a life that I helped create, right? And so again, it's not just your body. That child also belongs to me. 
because you hold me accountable in court for it. So you can't have it both ways. That would be fair, but why does that always come out your mouth, Mr. Johnson? That's fair, but <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like a natural reaction for me to tell a woman. I got pregnant and wants to have an abortion. It's not your fault, brother. It's not your fault. You you, you came up you came up during a time where men didn't have no power, man. We got to start stepping up and speaking out, brother. I, I, I utilized my power. Yeah. I let me get my power. I didn't let have, me get Uncle Stu. Uh, let me get Uncle Stu. Gregory, I heard that. You right. Hey, Courtney, I'm a, I'm a, uh, I got, I got a hey, bounce. Hey, hey, hold on. Don't, don't bounce yet. Don't you, bounce yet. Listen, don't I don't bounce yet. You, you, you will do nine hour it. streams. I know you can hang for five minutes. Brother, I'm already worn out. I, I'm, I'm, worn out. I'm worn out. <laughs> I'm worn out. I'm worn out. Look, Go. you, you the Go. youngest one on this panel. Stop playing. Man, my throat hurts still. I, listen, I'm still trying to recover from that. That was a crazy I don't thing. He might be the youngest, but he don't look the youngest. Okay? Right. Yeah. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Corny got a tall beat. <laughs> Mr. Corny, thank you so much for bringing me up. Mr. Johnson, thank you for being a good sport, brother. I really appreciate the dialogue. All about it, oh, Uncle Stu. I'm gonna pass the to you, yeah, right, Uncle Stu. Don't to... take it easy on the brother, Uncle Stu. Right, I'm... I'm look, look, look. I took my pill, Courtney. Understand? I took my pill today. I'm calm. I took my pill. Oh, okay. <laughs> did, you have did you have something for Nathan, Uncle Stu? No, no, no. I was just messing with him to say, okay. you know, hang out. Yeah. No. Well, I'll be, I'll be listening. To, I'll be listening in the back. I got to get up and run around in circles. I'll be listening. I'll be in the chat. <laughs> All right, love y'all. Peace. Thank Shout out to the chat. All right, peace. All right. But no, uh, Mr. Johnson, you know, I know that the, the last gentleman, um, you know, was talking about what happened in the 70s. And right. and reality is, you know, I'm a generation behind you. You oh. know, my 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 voting era would have been late 80s, early 90s. And I think that there is a time where we in the older generation, uh, we got to admit where we drop the ball at and now pick it up and, and go for it. We got to admit some, you know, some things we seen, some things we didn't. And it's okay. It's okay. Let's give him that. You understand what I'm saying? So when you heard me bring up Clarence Thomas, don't bring up the wife because this man got viscerated in the 90s. How many of us black men stood up for him when he got viscerated in the 90s? You know, I am a product of, of the Million Man March. You know what I'm so saying? We what got viscerated trying to protest during the Million Man March. What was the Million Man March about? Black men standing up trying to do the right thing, go back to the community. We can't let that history go, mm -hmm. but we also got to recognize some of the anger that some of these younger generation people are feeling. So we got to give them a certain level of that anger. You see what I'm saying? And with that, we got to be that older generation that stands up and say, okay, we may have dropped the ball in the nineties, but we ain't going to drop the ball now. We may have, we may have didn't see certain things in the nineties, but we see it now. You understand? So there's a certain level of, of back and forth in which we got to take. So the the when I say it's time for the back and forth or time of the stop is I have daughters. I taught my daughters what I call P discipline. Mm. And if we ain't teaching our daughters P discipline, this is what's going to happen. And that's the problem. We're not teaching our daughters P discipline. We're not teaching them how to really vet a man. That's that's number one. And then number two, as far as us as men, we got we got emasculated in the early 2000s. We got to stand up and talk about that. We got emasculated. We got to teach these people how we got emasculated. How was our power taken? How did things happen? What we didn't have in the 90s, we didn't have the Internet. We had no way to communicate. The only way I knew what you was going through if I pick up a telephone. Mm hmm. Now we have the ability to communicate with men, not only nationally, but internationally. And we, as the older generation, we got to hear what's going on, know what's going on and be the first to step up. Why? Because you and I is in a financial position where they can't silence us. So we got to become the voice of these young men who right now don't have a voice. Okay, to know better is to do better. And what do I mean by to know better? We can now go back and say, you know what? We messed up when we didn't defend Clarence Thomas in the 90s, but we're going to defend him now. You worried about his wife. I'm worried uh, about the policy. Uh, we uh, got to uh, start stepping up for the policies. We failed. The policies didn't 
work. We got to sometimes leave one party that did not prove itself to be right and exact. And we may have to switch. We got to start speaking policy. We got to admit where we made a mistake, learn from it and move forward. We can't keep coming up with these ad hominem attacks. We can't keep telling our black men, step up, step up, step up. bro. when I was growing up, I couldn't name five black millionaires. Today, I can name five black millionaires. When we was growing up, we couldn't name five black male billionaires. Today, we got five black billionaires. We need to recognize the advancement of black men that they have stepped up, they have educated themselves, they have become more financially successful, they have leveled up since the, since 95, there's more black male millionaires, there's more black men in the middle class, there's more black uh, black uh, male billionaires. We need to praise them for their step up and begin to fight for their right to be who they are. We got to stop making excuses and we got to stand up. We can't keep giving these ad hominem attacks, always going to the lower individuals and saying, well, we got to fight for the 1%, but we're going to let the 95% go. Now, the reason I can say that, because I got a 23-year-old. Do I want my 23-year-old who now got a great job, great career, got a family, trying to do the right thing, and have some freaking woman who could just accuse him of anything without proof, and now his whole life is destroyed off of accusation? We're not standing up for somebody that can come after a man after 50 years and then turn around and be able to even get any kind of money. We need to stand up. You and I saw what happened during Rodney King. You and I saw what happened in those times. So we can't act like we ignorant and that everything was a kumbaya. It wasn't. We saw the visceration of, of a woman who got up there and literally off of accusation, almost tried to destroy a Supreme Court justice. Why? Because one group said he didn't deserve to be up there because he's a Republican. Really? So now we as black men don't have our own intellectual intelligence to decide whether we want to be Democrat, Republican, conservative, or independent? We have to be, we have to, Mr. Johnson, we have to take a step back, stop acting like the Democrats did everything right for us and begin to look at the truth of the policies of the history. We have to say, okay, fine. What may have worked in one generation was great, but it did not work in this generation. In our generation, we can get out of high school and make good money. These kids can't get out of high school making no good money. These kids can't even go to the military the same way I went to the military. When I went to the military, all you had to have was a GED and a high school diploma. You doggone near had to have a college degree to get into the military today. We have to begin to recognize the advancements of this generation, correct what we can correct, and stand up and fight for these younger people. That's all they're asking us to do is to fight for them. And that's the problem. Our generation, we dropped the ball in certain areas. Let's admit it. Whether we like to admit it, and I'm not saying that you may have personally did it. I can't say I personally did it, but I recognize the argument. And so they're looking for us to say, okay, this is where we may have made the mistake, but here's where we're going to make the correction. And if we're not learning how to make that correction, sir, then we're going to fail as a generation and we'll never get the respect in the eldership. This is why that man can come up on the platform and literally viscerate the older generation, because a lot of us won't even recognize the anger and the pain that they are going through. And when we're sitting there and we're sitting there going, well, you know, uh, the black man got to do this. The black man got to do that. They're sick and tired of what the black man got to do. When do we hold women accountable for the situation that they are doing? Because at the end of the day, sir, unless it's a grape, she's the one that has the responsibility to open up her legs. When I teach my daughters, I taught them. You are the final one. Why? Because unless it's a grape, you make the choice on the man that you allow in between that those legs. You did. So if you go out here and get a sorry man, I can't blame that man because you're the one who made the final decision. We got to man up and, and, and speak truth to power and not be weak about it. 
not be afraid about it. Am I saying that everything should be all women and no accountability on men? No, I'm never going to say that. But what I am going to say is, ladies, if you close your legs, a lot of this situation would not take place. <laughs> but see, when we as men don't have the strength and don't drink our milk and get that vitamin D and put a backbone on us, you know what they call us out here in this YouTube streets? Weak, simp, betas. It's time that we rise up as men and say, got you. Tell you, you, you tell me how you arguing, you fighting, and I'm going to go out here and I'm going to fight for your rights. The rights that you are trying to get today. That's, that's all I'm saying. And I'm speaking to you as a person that we should be less than 10 years apart in age. I'm speaking up for the 20 and the 30-somes that can't speak. I'm speaking up for the 20 and 30-somes that may don't have the vocabulary to be able to articulate and express their inner feelings and their inner anger as what's going on. These youth are angry right now. They are pissed off right now. And if you and I don't learn to have a little bit of compassion for what these kids are going through, we're going to lose another generation. And I'm asking you, join me, Mr. Johnson. Join me in fighting for these kids. Instead of giving Courtney all these little ap homonyms and who do this and, and what <laughs> happens here, help me to develop the next generation. Help me to educate the next generation. If you feel that a man should be able to say no, teach me to teach them how to do that. Because right now, they're struggling. Right now, they're lost. Right now, they're looking for guidance and direction. And if you and I don't step up and give these young men the guidance and the direction and the protection, we done failed them all over again. And I refuse to fail that next generation. That's why I wanted to come back up here, Mr. Johnson, because you, what Courtney may not understand, what, 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 what Nathan Daly don't understand, you, sir, you and I grew up in the same thing, watching the same stuff on the same television. You and I grew up watching Oprah Winfrey destroy us. You grew up watching all these different things. You watched a man get on national television, make millions and millions and millions of dollars embarrassing our black community for over nine to 10 years. And as soon as one black man who only did it for maybe a year and a half got viscerated, where was the stand up? Okay, I'm I'm done. I did take my pill, Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I said I let Uncle Stu, Uncle Stu. <laughs> but Mr. Johnson, I will be having that conversation about about Clarence Thomas. But because of Courtney and and, and them, it probably yeah. won't be the Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but that that's it. I mean, I, I'll let you rebut on anything I, I say. I, I just, agree with I just, a lot. I just, I just, I just all. Yeah, that's fine. And that's and that's that's it's gonna always be that way. That's fine. It's always gonna be there. You're never gonna agree with 100 percent of what anybody says or how they feel. That's true. But that's okay, as long as we keep it moving. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you allowing me to to talk to you, Mr. Johnson, and 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 again. I hope we can keep moving this ball forward and let's stand up for this for this last generation. And only and the biggest thing I disagree with you about is Clarence Thomas. That's I'm, fine. I'm not a big fan of his. I don't want to get into a big old thing about it, but uh, it's okay. I'm just not. That but, that's fine. But but uh I get it. That's fine. That's fine. I just okay. wanted to come up here because I wanted you to really understand what the what the last gentleman when he was, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. what he was spouting, and I really wanted you to get a, a more clarity on that. You know, does it hurt? Yeah, it hurts. Does it sting? Yeah, it stings because you might be saying, "Man, I, I didn't, I didn't do this, and I wasn't here, and I didn't do this." You know, we and, and, and I wasn't there for a whole lot of stuff, but you know what? I witnessed a whole lot of stuff. Now that I do got the mic, it's my chance to now come there back and fight. Wow. I like Commend that. You for that. Commend you for that. Yes, sir. All right. Well, I All appreciate right. you guys. I'm gonna drop you both down. Okay. Thank you, um, Courtney. You know, well, I'll, look, I'll be talking to you tomorrow. I'll be on your live. Yeah. <laughs> People follow Uncle Stu. Um, his uh link to his page is in the chat. Also, Nathan that just came up. 
Um, I believe Sayla and I think some other mods put this stuff in the chat. So you guys follow. These are my, this is my family. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I mean, just amazing content, honest conversations. And even with pushback, you know, the, the idea is not to argue or mm -hmm. anything with you. It's just to like minds, like minds. And if you disagree, let's have the conversation on why we disagree and, you know, Absolutely. And I enjoy that. So I appreciate you guys both. Thank you so much. And Gregory, thank you All for right. popping up. When you said you disagree, I said, well, come on up, baby. <laughs> I'm always ready for a disagreement. Thank you, Courtney. <laughs> All right. You. I hope to see you again, uh, Mr. Johnson, on these YouTube streets. You're very I'll important to us. Up. I'll be looking you up. All yeah. right. Thank you, it's sir. All, All right. right. Have a good one, y'all. Right. Good night. Well, 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 I think we covered a lot. Um, I think uh, <laughs> I know the videos that I played was probably like an eye opener, but that was the purpose. The purpose was, um, you know, if we say we pro-life, then let's just show the nitty gritty of it, of the reason why. If you're saying you're pro-choice, okay, I understand but let's maybe see some see something from a different perspective which again the media uh, planned parenthood are not going to show you exactly what happens and what happens to the baby and i think it's time that we start having a little humanity in these conversations i think we need to start looking at these babies as lives that feel pain that laugh in the womb that scratches their head in the womb at eight, nine weeks. So if the baby able to do that, then it deserves rights and justice and they deserve to live. So yeah, I'm excited about uh, Roe versus Wade being overturned. So we shall see what this has in store and I'm going to be here to talk about it. So I appreciate you guys so much. I'm going to end with a video. I dropped the link of this page that I subscribe to. I watch all the time. Um, it talks about abortions. It talks about life. It's everything that someone can tell you. What about rape? And what about this? And what about this? They do it. They do it so clearly and they do it again. It's all out of love. So I'm going to play that real quick before I head out. Jasmine, man, I appreciate you just showing love support. I love when you go live and hearing your opinions. Well, you know, I'm opinionated. So I appreciate you so much. So, yeah, you guys, if you haven't already, like the stream. You know, leave your comments. And again, thank you guys so much for your support. I really do appreciate you. And until next time, Black folks or white folks, all folks, all family, this is a children issue. It's not a race thing. It's not a man, woman thing. Um, it's a save the children thing. And I think that is worth more than the BS that a lot of times that we talk about. So. Let go. Healing and the support of her community. The rapist should be held accountable to the fullest extent of the law. And in many cases, our laws must be improved to more fully protect women and girls from their attackers for me because my own mother was a victim of rape and she chose life my life when someone says that children conceived in rape should be aborted they're talking about me my mother saw that my life was not worth any less than anyone else's simply because of the way that i was conceived and that i shouldn't be put to death for the crimes of my father abortion does nothing to give the woman the healing that she needs and deserves Abortion doesn't erase the rape or undo the violence that the woman has suffered. Instead, abortion subjects this woman, and now her child, 
to yet another act of violence that also cannot be